Zellian, he could, well, he's the deep threat. He's caught 60 passes, more than half of what Daryl Connor has thrown, and he's caught him for 859 yards and 14 touchdowns. So he's the deep threat for Hersher. And anything he can touch, he can grab. He is a tremendous threat for the Hersher Tigers. Meanwhile, Ducoin, no slouch either, has a much more varied attack. A lot of different people led by Ghani Morgan, and that is uh, Ghani, right? That is Ghani. And he leads the team in rushing with 859 yards. And what the versatility they have is more in formations than it is the type of receivers and the running backs that they have. Ghani Morgan will lead the parade for Ducoin. A total of 26 games they've played this season. 26 wins for both teams, 13 each. We'll see what happens in game number 27 when we get set for the kickoff. And the introduction right here. When we get set for the kickoff. And the introduction right here at normal when we return. Now you can. A warm, comfortable night here. And normal, and let's pick up the introductions from Steve Adams on the PA. For the Tigers of Hersher High School. Introducing the head coach, John Wakey. John Wakey in his fifth year at Hersher. He's had him in the playoffs all five years. At left end, number 44, Eric Vickery. At left tackle, number 76, Dave Hendricks. Dave Hendricks has a big job today. He's filling in for an injured starter. At right starter. tackle, number 72, Rob Schultz. At right end, number 75, Eric Schmidt. At linebacker, number 40, Brian Lockwood. Brian Lockwood, the leading tackler At for the At linebacker, Tigers. number 17, Barry Warhurst. At linebacker, number 99, Jay Schnell. At defensive back, number one, Troy Morical. At defensive back, 31, Benny Leiser. At defensive back, number 30, Brian Jacobson. And at safety, number 11, Dana O'Connor. Dana O'Connor is safety, and that's a look at the starting defensive lineup for the Hershey Tigers, who will be kicking off. And now, introducing the starting offensive lineup for the Indians of DuCoin High School. First, the head coach of DuCoin. And now, introducing the starting offensive lineup for the Indians of DuCoin High School. First, the head coach of DeCoin, Alan Martin. Al Martin went to high school here, played football here, and this is his first year at left as head end, coach. Number 25, Maurice Brown. At left tackle, 73, Sean Baldy. At left guard, number 78, Aaron Hill. At center, Number 58, Joel Shockley. Shockley, the only junior in the starting offensive lineup. At right guard, 79, Martin McGuire. At right tackle, number 61, Gail Galbraith. And at right end, number 89, Shane Boyette. At quarterback, Number 19, Scott Baxter. At halfback, 41, Ghani Morgan. At flanker back, number 22, Bryce Elledge. And at fullback, number 43, Sid Boyette. Sid Boyette Those are the fullback. Shane Boyette, his twin brother, both in the starting lineup. And we are all set for the kickoff now. Hersher will be kicking off. They are in the white uniforms. Ducoin, you're looking at the Indians now in the black around Coach Al Martin. Both teams 13 and 0. Jack, you got a. Both teams 13 and 0. Jack, you got a gut feeling about this one? Well, I kind of think that uh, Ducoin is going to have to control that football and keep it away from that very potent Hersher offense, and that's going to be a very difficult task for Ducoin because Hersher also plays excellent defense. I've kind of. I'm kind of leaning a little bit towards Hersher just based on their uh, 
points per game average, which is almost 38 points, and DeCoin with 26, both with potent offenses. But I think uh, DeCoin has really got to control the football and the clock. Well, one key or meaningless statistic, take your pick. We'll let you know after the game. Chris Bazalian has caught as many balls as the DeCoin quarterbacks have thrown. DeCoin has thrown 61 times. And Bazalian has caught 60 for Hersher. That could be a key element because if they're not used to throwing the ball, if they get down and behind early where they have to go up top to catch up, it could be very difficult for DeCoin. We saw that in the woman because if they're not used to throwing the ball, if they get down and behind early where they have to go up top to catch up, it could be very difficult for DeCoin. We saw that in the 1A game with uh, Hancock Central having a tough time against Arcola. You're looking at number 66, Kirk Shelton. He is a junior. And he will be kicking off to number 10, Tim Davis. Number 25, Maurice Brown, who is the middle man. And Eric Green, number 30. You see Brown in the middle. He is deep, and we are set to get underway. Squib kick right off the bat, but it's taken by DuCoin. Louis Rouse making the tackle on Chad, on Chad Tadero. And first of all, we'll take a look at the DeCoin backfield. Scotty Baxter, the quarterback. Gani Morgan, we've told you before, their big threat. Sid Boy at the fullback. And the flanker back is Bryce Elledge, number 22. And there's the line. Baldy Hill, Shockley, the junior, McGuire, Galbraith, Shane Boyette, and Maurice Brown. They'll come out in the wishbone. It's a little bit of a looser wishbone, and they have a lot of variations off it. From their own 35. And the first carry right away. They go to the big gun, Gunny Morgan, who gets to the 37-yard line before he's brought down by number 40, Brian Lockwood. Before he's brought down by number 40, Brian Lockwood. On on defense, Vickery. Crichton is the starter who has been injured. Dave Hendricks is in for him. Schultz and Schmidt, the other two down linemen. And the three linebackers, Lockwood, who just made the first off worse than Schnell. And in the defensive backfield, Morocco, Lizer, Jacobson, and Dana O'Connor. Second down, call it gain of two, eight yards to go. And this is Eric Green, number 30, and Green's got daylight. Ball is loose. It looks like DuCoin is on the ball, but Eric Green looked to be gone. DuCoin recovers its own fumble, and the game is inside the Hersher 40 to the 36. And there, this is just a great running effort right here with keeping his legs going and bouncing off various Hersher defenders. Just a tremendous effort. And here the ball is gone right there. He's carrying a little too loose, but the follow-up by that big tackle. Let's take a look at it right here. He loses the football, and the tackle coming downfield behind him. Watch McGuire. Tackle coming downfield behind him. Watch McGuire. That was a 28-yard run. Martin McGuire, you're going to hear a lot about him, both on offense and defense. First and 10 from the Hersher 35. Baxter holding on, and Baxter is dragged down by number 40, Brian Lockwood. The officials, the, re the officials, the referee in the white cap in the middle, Robert Hearns of Rockford. Other officials, Don Anderson of DeKalb, Paul Engstrom also of DeKalb, Richard Underwood from Samanoc, and Edward Pavanka, the back judge from Sycamore. The back judge, as we mentioned earlier, the fifth official added this year, the back judge from Sycamore. The back judge, as we mentioned earlier, the fifth official added this year by the IHSA. Just the start of things. Ten minutes to go here in the first quarter. This is the opening drive of the game. Back to the quarterback. Sid at the fullback. Back to the try his first attempt. Say no. Hersher on the sack. 31. Benny Lizer blitzing up from his defensive back position. Putting the brakes and on the Scott Baxter. The key to this was number number 30, Brian Jacobson, who took away the inside on that slant route. Never got him. Gave the number number 30, Brian Jacobson, who took away the inside on that slant route. Never got him. Gave the quarterback an opportunity to throw that ball. So that sack really goes to Brian Jacobson, number 30, the defender who was out there on that split receiver. Nice defensive effort. Bryce Elledge comes out. Eric Green comes in at the halfback slide over on the right. They send him out now at the bottom of your picture. 
The one setback, and this time Baxter being chased. Let's it go, looking for Shane Boyette, and Boyette is ruled out of bounds. Shane Boyette made the catch, but out of bounds. Brings up a third down. He's running in the sideline. Tremendous pressure by Hersher's front four, and he throws the ball up, but it's out of bounds right here, even before contact was made. Interesting formation by DeCoin when they went, went into their uh, three receivers to the short side of the field. They tried to, tried to throw off the defense of Hersher, which was in a monster defense. Nice job by Hersher. Eric Green back to punt. Average a bit better than 30 yards, and... Chris Bazelia, number 93, in single safety, but he will let it drop and go into the end zone for a touchback. And Hersher will let it drop and go into the end zone for a touchback. And Hersher gets his first chance at things after the 43-yard punt. Well, the beauty of the state championships, of course, is that it brings in teams from all over the area. And we've got two teams from different necks of the woods. Hersher, of course, a suburb of Kankakee. Meanwhile, you've heard about DuCoin for years, the home of the Hamiltonian, the premier harness event, but they play some pretty good football down there in southern Illinois. That's south of Carbondale, and there we have it. So now we have it. So now you've got places to go when you're out touring in your car. Hersher comes out in the eye. O'Connor. And the first give to Bob Baird. Eric Seifert making the stop for DuCoin. As Baird... The tailback and the leaning ground gainer getting the first call on offense for the Tigers. 8.45 to go. Offense for the Tigers. 8.45 to go. No score. Kersher's opening drive, opening series, we should say, of the game. Gain of four. Call it second and six. Darrell O'Connor, the quarterback. And again, the quick handoff. It goes to the fullback, the upback, Eric Vickery, stopped by Sid Boyette, number 43. And Vickery, number 43. And Vickery gets another one or two. O'Connor, the quarterback, Bob Baird, that's with a B, as well as the AIRD, is the big ground gainer at the tailback. Troy Morical and Eric Vickery up there in the backfield. Greasemer, Cruz, Scholl, Bradley, and Leonard, the line. Schnell and Brazilian, the receivers. Third down and four. And we get the whistle. O'Connor looking for the encroachment call. And it seemed to me, Jack, he was looking for the DeCoin Indians to come across the line early. And sure enough, they did. Well, he got that easy five-yard penalty. Encroachment on the defense. The review for our fans, all they have to do in high school football is cross that invisible line. Contact does not have to occur for that five-yard penalty. Unlike college and the pros where you can get back. Right there, you saw that down guard over the offensive guard of Hersher jumping, and that was at five. Can't get back. Right there, you saw that down guard over the offensive guard of Hersher jumping, and that was at five-yard penalty. Troy Morical split down here to the near side. They split the backs. Bazalian to the right side. And the give straight ahead. It goes to Vickery again. Sid Boyette on the tackle. Vickery's been an interesting uh, sidelight, really, to Baird. Vickery's been an interesting uh, sidelight, really, to Baird's outstanding season. Baird in the 1,000-yard category, which is really what we call the elite in football. But Vickery's been very consistent with 642 yards, and that's a 5.6 average. And you can get that from your fullback. You've got a real good offense. Two wide receivers split to either side. Split backfield now on second and seven. O'Connor's pass is tipped. Martin McGuire, two-way lineman, and McGuire, who's already made a clutch fumble recovery, comes into bat that pass. Three-step drop, and he just turns the rifle to that seam route to the split end. You can see right here, great athletic reaction by that defensive tackle, and we just saw that uh, where he gets off his feet, he's watching his feet, he's watching the arm of that quarterback, and that's a great athlete. Third and seven, there's McGuire. Third and seven, Bazalian at the top of your picture. And this is the place where they usually look for him. Instead, they run it to Baird, and Baird is swarmed all over. Kim Morgan, number 44, in there to make the initial hit. Little sprint draw action here to Baird. 
hoping that Ducoin will be looking for the pass, and it goes nowhere. Great effort by the defense of Ducoin, and it goes nowhere. Great effort by the defense of Ducoin, all over Baird, who is the thousand-yard rusher with 23 touchdowns for Hersher. Troy Morical, number one, a punter with a 30-yard average, and there is Brown, number 25, in single safety. Brown at his own 36. And down goes Brown at the 43. So each team has had a series. 33-yard punt there by Hersher. Brian Lockwood on the stop for the Tigers. And the Indians go back to work with 6.23 to go first quarter. That's just about where the ball was the last exchange of... That's just about where the ball was the last exchange of possession by DuCoin. So it's been a kind of a feel out situation here in the first series for both teams trying to figure out what they're going to do against particular offenses. Again the wishbone for DuCoin still scoreless halfway through the first quarter. Baxter the ball is loose and this time Hershey's has got it. Coming in quickly Eric Vickery was in the backfield almost before the snap. They were stunning the linebacker this time. You'll see right now he slants to the inside right there, which pulls the guard down. And he just never gets the ball. Great camera angle. He never gets the ball at a running back. That was an air fumble. Strictly watch the ball here. Never touches the, the back. What happens is that defender pulls the arm down to the quarterback, and he never got to give the handoff. Great penetration back, and he never got to give the handoff. Great penetration by Hersher's defense. Gazellian to the far side. Moracle to the near side. First and ten from the 37 of the Indians. O'Connor to throw. Intended for Moracle, but way short. Bryce Ellis, the defender. Well, blood route there by uh, Hersher, Mike. They ran a receiver deep and then brought two across the field. But uh, DuCoin did a nice job of cutting them off. Second and ten from the Indians' 36-yard line. Oh, we've seen DeCoin with some turnover problems early in the game. One they recovered, this one they gave up. Let's see. This time, Bazillion will be split to the near side on second down. This is Baird again. Baird gets to the 35 and whammo. That's it. Met by a host of black shirts, led by Shane Boyette, number 89, and Eric Seifert. Number 70 by Shane Boyette, number 89, and Eric Seifert, number 70. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in this scoreless game so far. First quarter, third down, eight yards to go inside the 35. Hersher in the eye. Moracle in motion. Looking for Moracle. And Scott Baxter makes the stop, and Moracle is inside the 15-yard line to the 13th first down Hersher. That was really a well-run route. O'Connor rolling to his left, and we can see the receiver got in behind the linebacker in front of the corner, and it was an excellent throw right on the money to Moracle, and he is now down on the 13-yard line, and Hersher is threatening to Moracle. And he is now down on the 13-yard line, and Hersher is threatening. 21-yard pass play, first and 10 for the Tigers. On the Indians, 13. <laughs> Vickery and Baird, the eye back, and the up back, and it's Vickery. Vickery to the 10. Stopped by Sid Boyette, number 43, Gotti Morgan, number 41. Under four and a half minutes to go, first quarter. This time again, Morocco to the right split. Brazilian to the near side. Good look there. Darrell O'Connor, the junior. Pitch to Bear. Baird cutting inside, but he stopped short by Eric Seifert, number 70. DeCoin looking very good against the running plays. 
This is just a power sweep to the right, and Barrett is looking for that seam to turn it off, and it's stretched out by Ducoin. And when he does turn up, the linebackers are scraping off to the inside and do a nice job. Ducoin has played very good by Ducoin, and when he does turn up, the linebackers are scraping off to the inside and do a nice job. Ducoin has played very good defense here, and of course they've done that all year long. Darrell O'Connor, we put him a year behind. He's actually a senior. Sorry, Darrell. Three and a half to go. Third and four. From the six. He's O'Connor open. Looking for Vickery, and it's short. Vickery was wide open there, Mike, as you saw coming out of the backfield. There was no coverage there, and the ball was underthrown. Said Boyette in there for DeCoin, but the pass on the shoe tops. See O'Connor, a left-hander, throwing to the fullback, coming out of the backfield, and you can see he's right. He's beat the linebacker, and the ball is thrown behind him, or he had six points right there. Now fourth down and four on the seven-yard line, and Hirsch is going to go for it. They're going to four on the seven-yard line, and Hirsch is going to go for it. They're going to go for six. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Oracle to the near side, Gazelian to the far side, backs are split, Vickery and Bear. O'Connor threw it behind him. Threw it behind Gazelian, who had to step on Scott Baxter. And Ducoin dodges the bullet. Here it is right here. We get a good chance. He runs an in and an out. You can see the ball is thrown behind him, and he has to turn around. Had he been able to cut out a little sooner, he had the position on a defender, and it would have been six points for Hershey, but the ball was thrown behind him. So Ducoin will start, but hardly being out of the woods, deep in its own territory on the seventh. And both previous times they've had the ball, Ducoin has fumbled. Let's see what happens here. They are in the wishbone. And back to the quarterback, handing it to Connie Morgan, and Morgan stopped up close to the line of scrimmage by Brian Lockwood, and we've called Brian Lockwood's name a great deal. You can see it's just a straight power, power handoff with both backs leading up before he ever gets to the line of scrimmage, though. Good penetration by the defensive front of Hersher, and they stop the play right at the line of scrimmage. Hersher plays a very aggressive style of defense. It's a 4-3, but they'll change it up, and they'll put those people down in the line, and they'll stunt those linebackers, and it's pretty tough to pick those people up. Second down. Baxter on the rollout, and Baxter is in trouble. Baxter is down short of the 10. Dana O'Connor leading the charge, and Hersher bottling up to coin. This is the outside linebacker for Hersher, and you can see him fighting the helmet and stringing out to the outside, and the pursuit is coming, and Hersher's coming up, and he did just enough to allow the rest of the defenders to get there to catch up and make another big play for Hersher and hold them to a two-yard gain. Brian Locke with the leading tackler on the team there. He didn't make the tackle, but he certainly made it easier for his teammates to do so. Third down, nine. And a quick hit up the middle to Sid Boyette, well short of the first down to about the 11-yard line. Eric Schmidt, along with Rob Schultz, that right side of the defensive line for Hersher making the stop, and it sets up a very important part for DuCoin with Eric Green hunting from his own end zone. There's Bazillion in single safety, and he's returned a few for touchdowns this year. Kickoffs and punts. Short punt right here. Takes the AstroTurf bounce, and Bazillion takes it on the 47. Brazilian ends up on the 47. So once again, Hersher will have the ball. We'll take a break right here. 116 to go. First quarter, no score. No big deal. The pain. Oh no, Carrie. It's called a Master Care Car Service. Brakes, alignment, tune-up. The work. It's no big deal. And a six-month or six thousand mile warranty. Covers parts, labor. Wherever they do master care service, from Seattle to Schnecksville. Sounds right, this master care. So right that fixing your car is no big deal. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. Master care car service by Firestone. I thought they just sold tires. I take care of my body, play a lot of sports, play to win. I go to Sportmark. They got the best at the best prices. For the way you play. 
The Everyday Sport Mart price is guaranteed the lowest in town, or I get the difference in cash. It's the ESP guarantee. For the way you play. Save on a full selection of bike, team clothing, coaches' shorts, and athletic apparel. Sport Mart guarantees bike for less. Sport Mart, for the way you play. A look at the crowd here at Hancock Stadium. Both teams well represented. The broadcast rights to the IHSA Boys Football Final has been granted to Sport a look at the crowd here at Hancock Stadium. Both teams well represented. The broadcast rights to the IHSA Boys Football Final has been granted to Sports Vision by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this event without the written consent of Sports Vision and the IHSA is strictly prohibited. The two coaches talking to their respective teams. We've gone through all but a minute 16 of the first quarter. The enthusiasm here, Mike, by both of these communities is outstanding. The stands are really filled, and I'm sure the Illinois High School Association has to be thrilled with the turnout we've had so far in these first three football games. Excellent turnouts. i got to thank the weatherman, too, because the weather has been ideal. Let's hope it holds. Single setback. All sorts of wide receivers strung out along the line of scrimmage. You're taking a look there at Darrell O'Connor. First and ten from the DeCoin 48. The pitch to Vickery. Victory, a couple of good blocks, goes for 10 yards, we get a flag. Could be a blocking below the waist from where it seemed to be thrown at that or a clip. Jerry Goldman, number 20, up there to make the stop after the 10-yard game, but they're marching backwards, so it will go against the Tigers. There it is. A clip. We have a personal foul, a clip, number 10 of the white on the offense. Well, I guess you're not supposed to say who it is in high school, but... Because there'd be a disclaimer for that <laughs> right. by mom and dad if you did that. Robert Hearns. Robert Hearns telling Bob Baird, don't do it. Let's watch the top of our screen, number 10, coming into the picture right there. Now, the new rule in football is you can extend the hands, but there he extended the hands from behind, and that's the same as a clip as if he knocked them down. Well, that nullifies the 10-yard game. And from the spot, the foul that makes it first down and 16 yards to go. Ball across midfield now at the Hersher 46. O'Connor. Looking here, it is complete to Ghani Morgan. Making the stop on Bob Baird. So Baird starting to redeem himself. Gunning Morgan coming up to make the tackle. Well, the back is coming out of the backfield because they're throwing it to uh, Bissell on side, and he's clearing two receive or two, two defenders out because they're double covering him to that side. And so Hersher's bringing in the back in behind him, and he's wide open there. Gain of 13 yards brings up a second down and three. The ball on the 42 of Ducoin. Bazillion to the near side. And the give is to Vickery, the up back, and Vickery gets close to the first down before he's stopped by Martin McGuire, number 79. And it will be about a yard short, brings up third down. Here's Vickery, the unheralded running back for Hersher, unheralded from the standpoint that most of the credit has gone to uh, Beard, O'Connor, and Bizalone. And he's done a fine job so far in this ball game. They won't get this play off. There is the whistle. There's the gun. There's the end of the first quarter. No score now in the Class 3A championship. Hersher and DuCoin will start the second quarter with Hersher on the offense. And now, a few words about uh, Bill Jouts. Uh, Benny, I have can only describe him as being wise, considerate, young, and above all, thirsty. And now, a few words about Rick Tellender. He is our youth movement, he is our voice of reason, he is our sex symbol, and he has brought... <laughs> Come on, I can't you know think of it, I can't say. think <laughs> what he's brought to this show. And now... A few words about uh, Bill Gleason. Southside Irish, that says it all. He's certifiably nuts. 
he's roofy, and he's outrageous. And now, a few words about Ben Bentley. Above all, the man is sexy. The sports writers on TV, and thanks so much for watching. It's fantastic. We begin the second quarter. Hersher in white, DuCoin in the black, and no score so far, and not much offense in the first quarter. No, there really hasn't been. There's been several penalties that have killed drives for both particular teams, and I think that first quarter was really a test to see what defenses would be used against certain offenses back and forth, and I think they're about ready to put in gear and open up. Third and one for Hersher right here. And straight ahead goes O'Connor, and O'Connor's got the first down. Going right behind the center, Kerry Shaw, a stop made by Kim Morgan, number 44. And they'll move the chains first down. There's John Wakey. John He's Wakey. returned home to his alma mater, Illinois State University. And I'm sure when he was an undergrad here, he never dreamed he'd be standing on that field coaching a team in the state championship game. Ah, that's nostalgia of it all. First and ten. From the 34-yard line, O'Connor looking for Brazilian. No flag. DuCoin wants an offensive pass interference. As Brazilian collided with the defender, Baxter, and Green. But no flags were thrown. Just a, just a fly route and good inside position by number 30, Eric Green, a 6'1", 180-pound junior. Just took the inside away from him, and O'Connor underthrew the football. Morical comes to the near side. Bazalia now split to the far side. Look at the first down situation. Hersher with its third. And here's the give to Baird. And Baird keeping his feet gets a couple of more yards across the 30. Down to the 28. Shane Boyette, number 89 on the stop. Sid Boyette, twin brother, helping out too. Keep it in the family. Good look at Bob Baird. Baird, only 155 pounds, but he runs hard. He runs hard. He's got 23 touchdowns this season. That's an incredible career for most people, and he's done it in one season. 180 yards rushing in the semifinal. Caught a TD pass, too. Third and four. Again, it's Baird, and again, Baird gets stopped, and again, the second effort will get him the first down. Joe Poliski, number 34, on the stop. Baird is a hard runner. Both the play, this play and the play before, you can see the he was stopped back for little or no gain. You can see it's an isolation play. The center block back with the guard and the down man and the fullback leads up on the linebacker. A short yardage play, very well designed, and that picked up the first down for Hersher. Got to say some good things, too, about the play of Kerry Shaw, the center, on a couple of key thirds down. They've gone right over him, and he has responded by clearing out the defense. Ten minutes, 40 seconds to go. Ball's on the 25-yard line now of DeCoin. For sure, on the move. Once again, it's Baird. Vickery in front of him. And this time, the defense strings it out. Johnny Morgan, number 41, in there. Sid Boyette, number 43. And not much of a game there, if any at all. So call it second down, and, well, let's give him one. Second and nine. Those linebackers for DuCoin are doing an excellent job of scraping off after those tackles close down into the seams and allows those linebackers to scrape off and they're really doing a fine job and they're both very quick linebackers. Well this is a team that's only allowed under six points a game and they do play a tough defense. You can see Baird with the 14 yards on the four carries. Here's carry number five and again Baird slashing his way. Shoestring tackle brings him down. Scott Baxter saving the touchdown. Bob Baird has really shown something on these last three and four runs. Bob Baird, a 1,000-yard rusher, 23 touchdowns. Here he goes, following his fullback into the line of scrimmage. And you can see those legs coming up. A real good effort here 
right there shedding the tacklers, and that's that ankle tackle that stops him from going into the end zone. Great camera work. 17-yard game makes it first and goal on the nine. Nine minutes, 30 seconds to go. The up back Vickery and Vickery with Seifert getting to the quarterback really quickly. Vickery gets a yard or two. And once again, good penetration there by Ducoin, Jack. They were in the backfield before the ball. What they're doing now is slanting to the gaps. When you get down in this area, you can see them slanting into the gaps, and they'll tie up one man. A guard and tackle will have to take the one man, and that leaves one gap open between the guard and the center. Gain of two, second goal. Ball's on the seven. Seven. Once again, it's Barrett, and again, he's stacked up for no gain. Outside linebackers coming right down and closing down behind that play. Shane Boyette making the stop, 89. Let's watch Boyette. He closes down. You can see the tackle blocking down, and Boyette gets right in behind the fullback right there and makes an excellent play on Bob Beard. And that's what happens when you block down that outside linebacker. If he does a nice job, takes the angle down flat, and he can get in behind the fullback and make the play. Ball's on the five. We looked at Shane Boyette there. Third down goal to go. Passing formation here, Mike. Baird comes in motion. O'Connor looking across the middle. Incomplete. Oh. Incomplete. Scott Baxter breaking it up. Intended for Baird in the end zone, and Baird was just this close to holding on. I really thought he had it. He had him open earlier. And he comes back here, and what happens is the defenders are allowed to react, and he's got the ball. Obviously, by that camera work, it didn't look from, from where we were up here. It looked like he had a little better position, but the ball is tipped. You could see how the, the rotation of the ball was temporarily changed there, and it, and it changed the velocity on the ball to the receiver. Well, on fourth down, you look at Scott Baxter, who along with Eric Green, the, the two defensive backs, came up to make the play and bring up the fourth down situation. We will have that call in just a minute. They've been to some of the most exotic and luxurious places in the world, and all at your expense. They are state troopers assigned to protect the governor and other officials, but we caught them doing something else. They're using them more as baggage boys and chauffeurs. Now, Paul Hogan reveals how top state officials take their bodyguards and you for a ride. And the millions taxpayers wind up paying in protection money. A Unit 5 investigation starting Sunday on Channel 5 News at 10. Are you shopping for that great used car that will give you dependable, affordable transportation? Look no further. Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet sells more new Chevrolets than any other car dealer in the entire Midwest. That's why we can pick and choose only the finest used cars to offer to our customers. So for the largest selection and best value, come in and drive home a specially selected used car at a price that can't be beat. At Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet in Elmhurst at York and Roosevelt Roads, where you always save more money. The biggest schools in the state go head-to-head -to -head tomorrow as Sports Vision continues its IHSA championship football coverage. The 4A game slated for 9.30 a.m. 5A follows live at noon. The 6A game at 2.30 for all your high school sports action. Tune to Sports Vision. Well, here's the situation. Fourth down and four. Actually, fourth and goal. The ball is on the five. And Hersher is going to go for six right here. They have not kicked a field goal this year. But the Tigers, confident in their offense, or maybe no choice other than to try for the touchdown. Well, they averaged 36 points a game, so I think that uh, he knows exactly what his offense can do. They have five yards to go. And the last time, they spread out the defense by showing a trip set to one side and a split to the other. And we might see that again here, looking for a crack in the secondary where O'Connor will be able to dump the ball in there. Seems to me, Jack, O'Connor's got to get the ball off more quickly and more precisely. He may still have a little bit of jitters. After all, this is the state finals. They go with a double set. Marco in motion. Fourth and goal. Pizzalian overshoots it. coverage Kim Morgan Sid Boyette in there and the pass over the head of Chris Bazalia here comes O'Connor right now but he's getting an awful lot of pressure from Duke Coyne right up front there linebackers 
Gani Morgan on a blitz comes in and puts a lot of pressure on him, and that's another angle to look at it right here. Watch Gani Morgan right there. He's in his face, and he never really gets the opportunity to put the ball on the money. So the ball goes over. DuCoin has bet but not broke it. And here comes the Indians' wishbone. And they get right away to Sid Boyette. Quick hitter, and Boyette gets out to the 15-yard line. Sid Boyette with a good run. Brian Jacobson, number 30 on the stop. But an excellent effort by Sid Boyette. An important first down call for DuCoin. I think I heard that big sigh of relief by Coach L. Martin all the way up here because he's down in a hole, and this is a big play on first down to come up to come up with a big seven, eight-yard gain here to get him out of that territory down there. Now he's looking at second and a long one. Quarterback keeps Baxter. And Scott Baxter out to the 35 on a belly play. Took the ball out of the fullback stomach and kept it himself. Good block by Aaron Hill, the guard number 78, to help spring Scott Baxter loose for 21. Hersher's defense will collapse down right on him. You'll see the kickout block right here, and the quarterback sneaks in behind him. And with some excellent, excellent running here, Scott Baxter, 5'11", 153-pound senior, is able to pick up some big yardage and put the ball on the 34-yard line, first and 10. Tight formation off the wishbone. This time, Boyette will take it. He said Boyette gets good yardage up close to midfield, and he carries Eric Schmidt the last five yards. The coin is developing a little confidence here in their offense, and... All it is is the fullback right now, a nice ride. And he cuts back and picks up another first down for DeCoin. And Hersher's defense has bent throughout the season, but they have never broke. And so we're getting a little pressure here with 6.50 left on the clock. 12-yard gain, balls at the 47 of the Indians. And this is Baxter again. And look at Baxter go. One man to beat, and he's beating it. Scott Baxter, 53 yards, touchdown. Outstanding effort by Scott Baxter. Consecutive plays where he followed the back into the hole. And makes a big play out of him. You can see the excitement on DuPont Indians fans. Boy, Scott Baxter, what a play, what a player. Scott Baxter, let's not forget, is also a top defensive player not easy to do for a quarterback going both ways great effort here by Duke coin walling off the entire Hersher front as well as their uh, linebackers and there's a great move right there where he broke by the safety and now it's a foot race and nobody's going to catch him 53 yards for a big touchdown for DuCoin. A 95 yard drive and next to no time and DuCoin has struck first here Watch Baxter cut right in behind here, and here's the big cut right now, cutting in right behind the block of number 41. Donnie Morgan. Donnie Morgan. Great effort, and there he breaks back against the grain, against the safety, and to see him fall down, and now it's a foot race, and there's nobody going to be catching Scott Baxter. 53 yards. Scott ran for 509, uh, actually he ran for 400 yards this past season, scored 11 touchdowns but never from that distance. And it took only a minute and 27 seconds after they took that possession of the football, and that drive was four plays for 95 yards in a minute and 27 seconds. Who says anything about a two-minute drill? <laughs> 6.38 to go in the first half. DuCoin now trying the extra point with Shane Boyette. And there's Scott Baxter. They had to take a timeout before the point after. Maybe to let Scotty catch his breath so he can do the holding right here. the problem on the snap and the ball is dead the conversion try is no good and they'll come back up the field now with the score DuCoin six Hersher nothing let's take a look at that uh, problem on the PAT the snap is pretty good but uh, Scott Baxter he might he just might be still a little tired he just muffed it and good penetration right there by Brian Lockwood, number 40. Saves the extra point for Hersher, and so DuCoin is up by six. Now, Baxter had carried the ball about the last uh, four out of five uh, plays for uh, DuCoin, so he probably was very tired, but the uh, key play there was that belly uh, fake into the fullback. 
And then Baxter came behind that for a good game. You're looking at Chris Bazalian, who has been effectively covered so far by DuCoin. He's a threat whenever he gets near the ball. Eric Green teeing it up on the 40. And the Indians will kick it away. Take it at the 10 by Morico, and Morico gets to the 21. Troy Morico, number one, taking the kickoff. Check it, that's Corey Jordan, number seven. Corey Jordan back there, stopped by Bryce Harsey, defensive back. And Hersher now finding itself in a six to nothing hole. And Hersher now finding itself in a six to nothing hole. You can see the drive again, a minute 27 to go, 95 yards and only four plays. The big one, of course, that 53-yard broken field run by quarterback Scott Baxter. And here is Darrell O'Connor leading Hersher. Bob Baird. Baird to the 29-yard line. Stopped by Sid Boyette. Six minutes to go now in the first half. Kind of like battling up lightning here and waiting for Hersher's offense to kind of burst loose, scoring 36 points a game as an average. And they've been battled up by Duke Point Indians. Outstanding defense. Have to see what effect it'll have on Hersher. A stunner like that can really set you back. O'Connor looking for Gazalian, and Gazalian, thank you very much, takes the ball to midfield between two defenders. Eric Green knocking him out of bounds. And we can obviously see that O'Connor is coming out shooting, and Bazalian finally got free, and they hooked up for their first completion. Now, they've been double covering him through most of the ball game. You can see right there, there's coverage underneath, but the safety never comes over the top, and he just runs a quick out. And with those outstanding hands, he's averaged 13 yards per catch. He's the threat deep for Hersher. 19 yards on that play. Ball's at the 47, first and 10. Down a little screen, and Morico checking it's Baird, and Baird is down to the 37-yard line in Indians territory. Shane Boyette, number 89, making the stop. And Hersher is rolling right back. Interesting where they ran that screen. They ran it over to the side of the same reception to Bislione, and he looks deep, and then he dumps the ball to Baird, and what he did is he drove off the secondary by running at the same side of the field, and they had that screen set up, and it was a big first down for Hersher, and they're on the move. Gain of 15, the ball's on the 38. Hersher moving with the deuce backfield now. Close up a Baird, and this is Vickery, and Vickery loses the handle. And Hersher holds on. Baird coming in to pick up the loose ball. Beating Sid Boyetta. Little counter dive action out of the split backs, and he loses the ball right there. You can see it bouncing around. And right there comes flying Daryl O'Connor. Nice effort by O'Connor to get in there and keep possession for Hersher. Gain of one. O'Connor for it, a 10 for 68 yards, going for pass number 11 right here. And it is thrown behind Vickery, and he had the tight end. Jay Schnell out there in the open, too. Sid Boyette on the coverage. Hersher came out on the sprint action and ran a flood route. They had a man deep in the end zone. They brought the tight end across at the intermediate. You can see him coming across the field at about 15 yards, and he'll come across to the hash mark, and that's usually where he is open, but they run that flood route. But uh, O'Connor is having trouble finding, uh, finding the mark, especially with the short routes. Well, the Coins defense putting a lot of pressure, that front five, if you will, on the quarterback. Third down nine. Another sprint out by O'Connor. Intercepted, Sid Boyette. And Boyette is down at the 29-yard line. The pass intended for Schnell, and Sid Boyette is there, and they've got the turnover. Daryl O'Connor has not thrown the belt, the, excuse me, the ball very well at all so far. He's underthrown his receivers, and there he's waiting 
a little too long here. He's got he's got the receiver open right now, but he's hanging on the football a little long, and he short arms it right here, and you can see why. He got a helmet right in the midsection. He underthrew it, and Boyette comes up with the interception. Martin McGuire had his helmet in the gut of the quarterback right there. So four minutes, eight seconds to go. DuPont on the attack again, and Sid Boyette up to the 39, 38-yard line. He's stopped in there by Eric Schmidt, number 75. Gain of eight yards, second and two. And DeCoin would like to punch another one in here with 3.50 left on the clock at half for halftime, and they're up by six. But they just had a nice big turnover, and I'm sure that they want to drive it down the field and get a score. One turnover for each team. They are in the wishbone now. Second and two, and Baxter again gets that hole. And Baxter goes to the 46. First down. Stopped in there by Lockwood. Barry Warhurst on the assist as well. And Scott Baxter. Barry Warhurst on the assist as well. And Scott Baxter has really been the weapon for the Indians. You can see how far off the middle linebacker is, and he just runs a quarterback sneak to the open side there, and it was a short yardage play, and he got the first down, but he kind of banged up his knee a little bit, and he's down right now, Mike. Well, that's all DeCoin needs right now is to lose Scott Baxter, who has really made the difference here in the second quarter. We're checking on Scotty right here. See if we can tell how it happened in there on the replay here, Jack. Right here, he, he fell right on the football, so hopefully it's just the wind knocked out of him because that uh, AstroTurf doesn't give too much. 3.31 to go in the first half to coin with the 6 to nothing lead, a surprising 6 to nothing lead, if you will, over Hersher. Well, Coach, it's a surprise at this point, Mike. Coach Al Martin, I'm sorry, Jack, attending to quarterback Scott Baxter. And I think that's all it is. He's got the wind knocked out of him. Well, they're going to take him out for a play, and they'll bring in Tim Davis, the backup quarterback. Davis, a junior, 5'11", 145. He's seen some action. Thrown a couple of balls, completed two out of three. But you can bet he's not going to do too much. This is going to be a handoff. He's not going to put the ball up to allow Baxter to catch his win and get back in there. 6-0 the score. The touchdown. Scott Baxter's 53-yard run has been the offense. Clock is running now. 3.20 to go. First and 10. Davis, the quarterback in there. On the pitch to Ghani Morgan. Morgan's got room. Morgan taken down by Schmidt and company after a gain of 10 yards. Baxter's up and about to come back in. Well, Tim Davis did his job he really did and I and I think I don't know if this was a planned play because it yeah. kind of looked like it was off it was supposed to be an option but I don't think that particular way but he got the uh, got the ball to the person they want to have the ball to and that's Ghani Morgan see how quickly there's not much of a fake he pitches the ball as the linebacker comes down on him and Ghani Morgan 5'11 190 pound senior the leading rusher for Ducoin gets outside and picks up a first down and again, the run by Sid Boyette, and Sid Boyette getting good yardage, another 10 yards. Well, with only 18 yards of offense in the first quarter, they have piled up close to 150 here in the second. Well, the combination of the, of the style of running by the running back from DuCoin, they're doing a nice job with second effort, but up front, DuCoin at this point is handling Hersher's defensive line. First downs are pretty close, but DuCoin is certainly taking matters in hand here first and 10 from the 32 yard line of the Hersher Tigers we're in the wishbone and the fullback Sid Boyette gets the call again and Sid Boyette gets inside the 30 to the 27 David Hendricks number 76 on the stop let's take a look at the middle linebacker number 17 Barry Warhurst and he's coming in hard. You can see that uh, they're being driven off the ball and handled pretty well by the Duke Coin offensive line. And that's the fullback popping up there, Sid Boyette, for a big gainer for Duke Coin. Gain of five, second and five. Ball's on the 27. Donnie Morgan, and Morgan is stacked up in there by several Tigers. Schmidt, number 75. Lockwood, number 40. Two names. 
who make a lot of tackles. Scott Baxter again had that one play blow and it's like he never missed a beat. Again, we're in four down territory here, Mike. They've got third and five and they've got two downs to get that five. Baxter. And Baxter using the belly fake again and Baxter gets the first down inside the 20 to the 17. A minute 20 to go. As Scott Baxter has played that to perfection. He just follows the fullback right in the hole right there. And it's just a lead block or almost like an isolation isolation play. And he had 420 yards during the season. Play goes off without the ball because DuCoin quickly called a timeout. So timeout on the field. DuCoin takes it with a minute 13 to go. Don't know who called that timeout, but uh, maybe things just weren't quite set because the team was ready to run the play. And maybe uh, Al Martin said, whoa, wait a minute. Look out. Well, Hersher's been in this situation before in the playoffs, Mike. Uh, they spotted Geneva seven points. And whoa, wait a minute. Look out. Well, Hersher's been in this situation before in the playoffs, Mike. Uh, they spotted Geneva seven points and then rolled 28 straight That's points right. against them. So they've been down on several occasions throughout the entire season. So uh, as we look at Scott Baxter here, you can see in the first half alone, 75 yards. And that's really not running to the outside on the wishbone, but running in between the tackles following the fullback. So that's some interesting yardage for a quarterback off the wishbone. Well, Hersher gave up 27 points in its first game at Coral City because they rolled up 41. But coming from behind has been the watchword for the Tigers here. Puts a few gray hairs on the coach's head, but so far so good. 165 rushing yards for DeCoin, 57 for Hersher. First and 10 on the 18, a minute 13 to go in the first half. Baxter. And Baxter dragged down from behind. We're going to line Benny up. Benny Lizer, number 31. They're going to quick line up without the huddle. The clock going to a minute. There's Baxter following them, and we're right back up on the ball in the same play they've been running so effectively. No huddle. Let's come back live. There is Sid Boyette. Boyette's got the roll. Boyette's got the score. Martin McGuire with the block. Sid Boyette with the cutback. And DeCoin has scored again with 50 seconds to go in the half. They are really tearing up the defensive front of Hersher. Let's watch the fullback right here. You can see number 40 stretches it out for Hersher. Brian Locke with the outside linebacker, but they run inside the tackle again, and he gets upfield and makes the big play for DuCoin. And DuCoin calls a timeout again here after a touchdown. Well, they had problems on the snap and the exchange after their first touchdown. Now Al Martin goes out there and wants to talk things over. What a... What a demonstration in the second quarter by the DuCoin Indians. Very surprised and uh, more surprised at the lack of offense by Hersher to this point. But at this at this juncture also up by 12 DuCoin I'm sure will be going for two points. They send Eric Green in there number 30. And Green. <laughs> Usually handles the kickoffs with Shane Boyette handling the point after, but uh, they may switch up right here. 11-yard touchdown by Sid Boyette. Second touchdown here. There's and Coach John Wakey, and he's a little concerned at this point. And I'm sure he's concerned by the way DuPoint is running. He's not probably not worried too much about the offense, thinking they'll be able to come back in the second half, but he's very concerned the way... DuPoint is able to run on his defense. Well, they're going to go for the two right here. Wishbone set up. And all sorts of flags fly. That's a coach's nightmare to have that happen before the ball is ever snapped. Well, now it'll take it back five yards. Take the ball back five yards and DuPoint got a problem here. You can see the movement here by Herser, but the left tackle for DeCoin. Baldy, Sean Baldy moved, and the reason that Herser didn't get a penalty is because they play off the ball a little more, so when they first make their move, they're not necessarily break, breaking the plane, 
and Baldy jumped, and now they're looking at uh, eight yards to go for this two-point conversion. Maurice Brown split to the right. They're looking for Shane Boyette. And it's intercepted. Oh, he could he score can run it back. He could score two points here. Hersher can. Barry Warhurst makes the interception, and if he had taken it back the other way, that would have been two points for Hersher. That's the new rule this year. That, that it would have been, and I don't think that he realized that. Baxter on the rollout here throws the ball. It's deflected. And right there, you can see him coming up to make the recovery. And he's going, and I... Uh, he knows he's got to go. Sure, good play in there by Ghani Morgan to knock him down. Kind of forced the ball in here, but you have nothing to lose on this. It's a two-point conversion. You want to make you want to make sure you don't get sacked, so you want to throw the ball up in the air for grabs. And so Ghani Morgan, again, all over the field, makes that uh, tackle that would have stopped Hersher from gaining uh, two points. Well, 50 seconds to go. DeCoyne has scored both ways like lightning on an extended drive. Ten plays on that one. 432 on the clock. Good control. And you're looking at Jim Cravens, number 14, who will kick off, and that's Corey Jordan, number 7, back deep, along with Vizalia, number 93. It's a short kick, and it will be picked up by Vizalia. And Chris Vizalia trying to fight his way free up to 27, 28-yard line, and 43 seconds to go. Hersher will have one more shot at things here before they go into the locker room. You can bet with, a, with the receiver they have that they're going to be putting the ball up and going deep with it, trying to get on the board here. 432, the scoring drive, 10 plays, and Sid Boyette capping it with the 11-yard run. Again, the conversion did not succeed, so two touchdowns, 12 points. 43 seconds to go in the half. Here is Hersher, led by Darrell O'Connor. See if they can get on track now before halftime. They got to go some 72 yards to do it. Here's the pitch to Bear. What do we know? We thought he'd, he'd put it up in the air, and and he's content to go in at halftime and go on the blackboard and make some adjustments here. Well, he's taking a timeout, so Kim Morgan made the, the stop there. Wakey takes the timeout. No sense in going to the locker room with those timeouts if he can use them because something could happen here, throwing a screen or are going deep in a game like this you have nothing to lose and you also have a receiver like Bazalian I would expect that they would try at least one they probably will but Ducoin has really double double covered they've changed the defense on him to uh, create problems but they've double covered him with a man under in a, in a two deep and at halftime Darrell O'Connor five for twelve on the completions eighty four yards but again he has had his problems seeing his receivers getting set and getting the ball. He's a sprint out quarterback. He certainly isn't a drop back quarterback, but he is having problems so far. 23 seconds to go. Second and 15 from the 46 yard line of the Tigers. Straight back. O'Connor got mustard on that, but uh, Bazalian in double coverage. Ball was way over his head. We can see that DuCoin here is double covered. You can see a man bumping him right now to throw the pattern off, and then he keeps dropping underneath, and he's running with man, but over the top right there is the zone, so they are doubling, double covering him. They're running a man underneath with him, and then they've got a zone coverage over the top. They had Maurice Brown pick him up deep. Eric Green has him at the line. Now 18 seconds to go, third down. They're in the eye. Brazilian at the top of your picture. Morical to the bottom. O'Connor, and the closest person to it intended for Bazalian was Scott Baxter, the quarterback slash defensive back. Here's Scott. He's played a heck of a first half. Little sprint out action again. It was off arm. Notice how he has to plant, turn back, and again, he's trying to go over the middle, but he overthrows, and it looks like Hirsch is going to punt the ball away here with 12 seconds left in the half. Maurice Brown and Baxter will drop back in double safety. They'll be deep at about their own 25-yard line. Troy Morical will punt it away. There is Brown. 12 seconds to go. And the kick goes out of bounds. 
at the 30-yard line of DuCoin. The Indians will get it back for one play. Twenty-nine yard kick. No return. Been a pretty well played first half. Only, I believe, only two penalties. And uh, both teams extremely well coached, and obviously they wouldn't wouldn't be here if they weren't. But DeCoy jittery in the first half with one turnover in the first quarter, one turnover and saving its own fumble by recovering it has really settled down here in the second. Well, Baxter just goes down on one knee, and that will do it for the first half. That's the end of the first half of play. Both teams head to the locker room. Scott Baxter trots off. He's played some kind of time with the score. DeCoin 12, Hersher nothing. We'll be back with halftime activities right after these words. Looks like a BMW 735. It must be at least 40,000. More room than the Acura Legend. I'd say 35. Feels like you're in one of those expensive sports cars. Fuel injected, overhead cam V6. We're talking major money. The under $17,000, 160 horsepower Nissan Maxima. Nobody sells Nissan for less than Ray Harris King Nissan. Home of King size discount, 5757 West Dewey in Niles. Here's the pitch to Bain. Swing and a fly ball. This will be it. Center fielder's got it. Cruz is tagged. Here's the throw. Not in time. Stop play. Relive the excitement of the 83 Division Championship with your own copy of Winning Ugly, the story of the 1983 White Sox. It's just one in an ongoing series of Sox highlight tapes you can order for the very first time from Sports Vision. Relive the drama of the longest game ever played, the 1984 White Sox Brewers Contest, which lasted two days. Follow Tom Seaver's historic path to win number 300 and the amazing 1985 Rookie of the Year season of Ozzie Guillen in the Emmy Award winning special Youth and Experience, the story of the 1985 White Sox. And follow the rebuilding course of Sox baseball under the helm of manager Jim Fragosi in a year in transition, the story of the 1986 White Sox. If you're a Sox fan, you'll want to add these tapes to your personal baseball collection. To order, Send 1995 per highlight show, plus two dollars and fifty cents shipping and handling to Sport Vision White Sox Highlights, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois 60303. Check or money order, no CODs, please. That's 1995 per tape, plus two dollars and fifty cents shipping and handling to Sport Vision White Sox Highlights, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois 60303. Please include your address and list either VHS or Beta. Be one of the first. To be one of the first to start a White Sox video cassette collection. Order today. And now be the first to have the Great Awakening, the story of the 1987 White Sox, a team that registered the best post-All-Star record in the American League West, a division that included the world champion Minnesota Twins. By sending check or money order to Sport Vision, White Sox highlights P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Well, I suppose you can call it a surprise, but after the first two quarters of play, DeCoin, the Indians are leading Hersh's Tigers by a score of 12 to nothing. Two second quarter touchdowns and two undefeated teams are having themselves some kind of battle. Well, the situation uh, really turned around in that second quarter. Hersher seemed to have certainly the edge in the first 12 minutes, but DeCoin got its act together, uh, led by their quarterback, Scotty Baxter. Well, Baxter, they seemed to found, found something in the Hersher defensive front because what he did in that series was continue to follow the fullback in, and he made those big runs that resulted in that 53-yard touchdown, and that really turned DeCoin uh, into some excited Indians, and they've really put the pressure on Hersher. Well, the Tigers are certainly going to be growling, too. As you mentioned earlier, Jack, they have had an uphill fight all through these playoffs, and they have persevered in every case. What happens now, of course, that's what the fun's all about. We'll see it over the next two quarters. The interesting thing about DeCoin, too, is not only did they put together a lightning drive, a lightning turnaround, but then the following possession, they controlled the ball for nearly five minutes, ten plays, and they went in behind uh, Sid Boyette. Well, Hirsch has really got their work cut out for him. Even though they averaged 36 
points a game. I don't think that they really thought that DuCoin could put that much pressure on him. And DuCoin has really controlled the football and kept Hersher's very potent offense off the field. Chris Bazalian, the All-State receiver, he's made 60 catches all year. He's caught a couple, but nothing to hurt so far to hurt DuCoin. Well, they're double covering him with a man under and his own over the top, and it's been very difficult for him. And when you've got a receiver of that caliber in high school football, you're always going to get double coverage. Well, I ask you this every time, so why break the trend? What do you talk about if you're the Hersher coach, uh, Wakey, in the locker? Room. Well, John's not going to get real upset because they've been down before. And when you have an offense that can put 36 points on average in a, on a football game, his main concern will not be for the offense. It's going to be for the defense. How do we stop DuCoin? They found something, and they're going to be coming back into the second half. So John is spending more time working with the defense right now, I think, than the offense. I think your guest coming up is going to have a few things to say about it, too. Uh, Jack will have Rich Sinani, who has coached in this championship several times, when we come back right here at, uh, where are we? Sure, we're at Illinois State. <laughs> Vision comes out of the gate with Chicago horse racing action. Mike Paradise and Eleanor Flavin set the pace with Chicago's harness racing results. Then join super jock Jerry Galatano and race announcer Phil George F. with the day's thoroughbred action plus betting tips. If you can't tune in early, Chicago Racing Wrap-Up and Chicago Harness Racing also conclude Sports Vision's weeknight program. For the most complete coverage of Chicago horse racing action, look to Sports Vision. NBA action. It's fantastic. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to halftime here of the 3A championship football game with DeCoin on top of Hersher, 12 to nothing. My guest this afternoon at our halftime is Rich Ziani, the legendary coach of the 3A state champion, Bishop McNamara. Now, Rich, I've got to let our folks at home know a little something about the background here. Rich has been at, at uh, Bishop McNamara for many, many years, but they've been in the state championship game six times. They've won it four times, and they've come in second twice. And up until this year, they've won it three straight years. So right now, you're in a very uncomfortable position. You're used to being on the sidelines. How have you kept that consistency over the years, Rich, and having such an outstanding pro? This year, they've won it three straight years. So right now, you're in a very uncomfortable position. You're used to being on the sidelines. How have you kept that consistency over the years, Rich, and having such an outstanding program? Well, Jack, uh, we have a tremendous community at McNamara, a lot of, a lot of uh, backers and uh, followers, and we have a great school um, in all areas. Uh, and I, I've had the same coaching staff with me for the entire 14 years I've been at McNamara, and uh, that helps tremendously, and great young men. And, uh, you know, we had a good year this year. We ended up 10-1, and one, and it was one of the best years we ever had because the senior class was just outstanding. They're great young people, and really had some good goals and uh, we got beat by a good Hersher football team and and uh, but we we're really proud of the season and the way and, and the way that uh, our kids came through for us all year long but well, really kind of interesting you and Hersher have been going at it for years and years in the Kankakee area I mean that's been the big game and I remember remember when Dean Kappel was at Hersher they uh, it seemed as if Hersher auto, always had to go through Bishop McNamara and that's always was that was the downfall so that's been a big game over the years for you guys it was it's it's still a great rivalry uh, we're not on the regular schedule any longer but we we meet in the playoffs, and it's a, it's a great game. A lot of people have a great community interest, and it's something we look forward to uh, every year. Well, I've got a question here. I've kind of put you on the hot seat a little bit, Rich. Uh, over the years, you know, there have been talk of uh, putting the private and parochial leagues into a separate category as far as the state championship series. 
Now, you guys have been in the driver's seat for many years in the 3A. You've got a fantastic program, and as we mentioned earlier, you've won it four times. You've come in second twice. Is there really any advantage to the private and parochial schools in the concept of uh, Illinois high school football? Well, Jack, I think there are advantages to both. Obviously, in a private school situation, if you look at the, the good programs that that come down here a lot, you'll see a lot of stability in the staffs again. You, I've been there for a long time, and my coaches have. A, the same with uh, uh, Marion Central with Don Penza there, and, and uh, Dave Matteo and Marion Catholic are good every year. Providence is good every year. All the Catholic League guys, there's very little turnover. And even if there's turnover in the Catholic League, it's usually somebody out of the Catholic League that's went to that school or been there. So there's tremendous stability in, the, in, in private schools. There's a lot of problems with private schools, obviously. The tuitions are always the problem. They're going up. Uh, enrollments have been going down for all of our schools. And, you know, it's, it's a struggle every year. And so there are pluses and minuses. Uh, public schools, I often wonder how it would be like to be able to be in a nice situation where you automatically have those 200 or 150 kids coming in every year. And you didn't have to worry if you were going to get 90 kids show up in your freshman class or 150 or whatever. So I think there are pluses and minuses for, for both. Very quickly here, Rich, what do you, if you're John Wakey down in the locker room, and uh, in a few brief words, what do you say to your football team at this point being down 12 to nothing? Well, John was knocking on the door twice, and they didn't get it in. It's just a little bit inconsistency in the passing game when they get it down deep. Uh, he throws the ball well in the middle of the field, and they've moved the ball well, and I think that's maybe one of the coin's weaknesses is defensing the pass, so I think you, I think you'll have to go to that. Now, they're doubling Basilian a lot, but... Chris will still catch the ball for you. He's a great kid and a great player, but he's also got Bob Baird, who I think is the key to Hersher's football team. He's come on uh, and just been gangbusters, and I, I believe me, Hersher's not out of it, and John knows that, and I think their kids know that. I've seen him down before, and I and I, and I, and I, and I know they're not going to give up, and I think they're going to come back. I really think it's going to be a great second half. Well, I totally agree with you. Since they've been averaging 36 points a game, you know that the potential is there to score. And I really appreciate you being here with us, Rich. You're kind of uh, out of your element, not being on the sidelines for the 3A state championship game. But we appreciate you coming by with us. And uh, I'm sure you'll probably be on the sideline in the next few years down there for that championship game. Thank you very much for being with us. And thank you. And we'll be back for the second half right after this. It's clearance time at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And they're pricing their stock so everything goes. Yep, 88 Chrysler New Yorker Landau, now with $1,000 factory cash back, goes! 88 Chrysler New Yorker, with $1,000 factory cash back, goes! Both with fabulous clearance prices. Yep, everything goes! Now at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Get there! On Chicago's north side, visit Irving Park Chrysler. Sport Vision salutes the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Coach Lou Holtz has taken just three years to put Notre Dame back in the national spotlight, and his young team continually warms the hearts of millions from coast to coast, week in and week out. It's just a great thing what's going on right now with our whole team. I think our defense, you know, it's just a great thing what's going on right now with our whole team. I think our defense is playing great. And for me, you know, I, I just enjoy being out there and winning football games. Ever since I came here, I wanted to do nothing but win a national championship. And now that I've been put in a position of leadership by my peers, I mean, that's made me excited. It's made me ready to go. Lou Holtz and company have put the spark back into the great tradition of Notre Dame. Lou Holtz reminds me very much. He has a bit of Rocky. He's got a great sense of humor. He reminds me of Leahy, a great disciplinarian. He reminds me of, of Eric Parsegan, a great organizer. He has all of this. Poor DuCoin, uh, they had problems in the first 12 minutes, but boy, did they straighten out. Well, they found a, a soft spot in that Hersher, Hersher defense. And you can see right here that Hersher is slanting to the football, and DuCoin is walling everybody off. And this is just an outstanding effort by Batcher. Watch him cut back here, and the safety goes down, down to the ground. And it's just a foot race right here, 53 yards for the quarterback, Scott Baxter, a senior, 5'11", 153 pounds. And that kind of, kind of put the pressure on Hersher early. 
Well, I don't know if Persher has gotten over that yet because the coin came around and they scored again in the second quarter, this time on an 11-yard run by Sid Boyette. Well, right here you can see that they stretched it out by the pressure Baxter's been putting on him with the option, and Boyette just makes a nice cutback run and gets into the end zone and puts uh, DeCoin up by a score of 12 to zip. That's where we are with 50 seconds left to go in the second quarter. That touchdown came. Both teams are back out on the field. We'll have some uh, first-half interesting statistics for you and the second-half kickoff when we return. Saturday, November 26th, the Bulls head for the mountains to play the Denver Nuggets at 9 p.m. on Sports Vision. And let's take a look at statistics. I don't know what they tell you, but there's one interesting one that tells you nothing. That's time of possession. Kersher had the ball 13-35 to only 10-25 for coin, which shows you how insignificant that statistic could be. It certainly is, and the big key here as we look at total yardage is DeCoin with 183, and I'm and I'm kind of surprised, and that 84 yards in passing was just in the last two minutes, really, for and that drive by Hersher, yeah. and it's been uh, quite a bit more dominant for DuCoin through the entire ballgame. They have really, really done a number on Hersher as far as rushing the football against them. Well, DuCoin has done everything on the ground. You can see they only attempted one pass and did not complete it. Meanwhile, the passing attack for Hersher has been bottled up. Well, it really has. 16. It really has, and, and O'Connor has not looked good, to be very frank about it, in the first half, and he's a much better quarterback than he has shown us in the first half, and his stats bear that out by the fact that he's thrown for over 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns, 116 completions and 220 20 attempts. So uh, we'll see we'll see a better job, I think, of him in the second half. You just saw Coach Allen Martin. There's Chris Bazellian, who will be the deep man to receive this kick for Hersher. Bazellian been kept in check with two catches for just 35 yards here in the first half. Eric Green, number 30, teeing the ball up, getting it from the official. And the DuCoin Indians will kick it away to start the third quarter. What a beautiful night for football. Is wind is just enough to keep you from is this getting the hula too hot. or what <laughs> this is the mildest november i have been through in quite some time especially from what we experienced last year down oh, here last year at this time oh is that the term you paid your dues last year and whoa now get the, the kick is topped somebody better pick it up and eventually it's louis rouse a backup running back who takes it, number 33. Matt Fouch, number 83, stops him, and Hersher will be in business with decent field position on the 39-yard line. It'll be interesting to see how well they do here offensively, because this will really perk up Hersher if they can come out and move the ball down the field, and certainly if they can get him to Duke Coins territory and, and put one on the board. In the eye, O'Connor to throw first down. Looking for Bazalian. Chris Bazalian makes the catch across midfield to the 45. Good catch by Bazalian. Knocked out by Maurice Brown, number 25. And that was an excellent throw by O'Connor. And again, this route has been what he's been running. He runs, runs the in, and then he bends in behind that guy, and he's got the, the bench area wide open, and O'Connor puts the ball right on the money. You can see what great hands he has right there. Game of 17. 17. And that's been the big passing route at this point for Hersher. And he's staying with his average of about 13 yards a catch. From the 46-yard line, the play action. And this time it is Vickery up short man. And Vickery gets seven out of bounds at the 38. Scott Baxter and Sid Boyette. Now this is just a fullback coming out, a little uh, flare action. He come, slides through off tackle and comes out. Mike, can you feel a little momentum? I mean, it's only been two plays. Only been two plays. Feel. I was just thinking the same thing. O'Connor has got some zip on his passes. He's becoming much more emphatic in his drops. And we'll see. You know, it's... Uh, and that passing game, opening that up, will, will open up the running game for Hersher. Let's see what DeCoin has to say. Second and two. And Vickery, the up back, will take it. And he gets the first down and more. George Dunmire, backup lineman in there. Dunmire, the biggest player on the field 
for Ducoin at 260, making the stop number 55. Little counter trap here to the fullback, and he cuts back behind that block of, that, of the center, Carrie Scholl, 5'11", 185-pound senior, really does a nice job at center for Hersher, opening up some holes up the middle there for Eric Vickery. Another first down for the Hersher Tigers on the 33. They are in the eye with the slot back to the left. He's open Another again, and he's got Vickery. Vickery picks up five before he is knocked out of bounds by Donnie Morgan. And interesting that O'Connor went to the short man, the fullback out in the flat, because he had the slot man wide open about 15 yards further down the field. But he's developing some confidence here. He just dumps it off to Vickery. And uh, Hersher's on a roll, and you sense that concept about lightning in the bottle, and that bottle, that lightning's kind of seeping out over the edges. Opening two minutes of the third quarter, Hersher trailing 12 to nothing. Both teams are undefeated. This is the Class 3A championship. Mike Lederman here, along with Jack McInerney, our Sports Vision crew, and we are bringing it all to you. Here's the reverse to Bazalian. Chris Bazalian. Johnny Morgan smacks him down, along with Shane Boyette and Bazalian. It gets about two yards, maybe three from the first down. There's a DeCoin player down as we look at the replay. Just a little reverse action here. The Bazalian coming around the end. Good blocks upfield, but uh, good pursuit there by Baxter coming up and making the play. But Hersher's kind of on a roll here. You can kind of feel it. The, du the DuCoin crowd sitting down in front of us is kind of sitting on their hands here. They're a little nervous about this. Well, still they have a third down and three for Hersher with two downs to get that three. We'll take a look. That's the Hersher crowd. You can see the yellow. And the DeCorn crowd is in the red. Where are we? Okay, that's the DeCorn side of the field. And Gani Morgan uh, was shaken up on the play coming out under his own power. We're sure we'll see more of Gani. He's a tough football player. DuCoin Ten minutes. Could, excuse me, Mike. DuCoin could ill afford to lose him. Ten minutes, eight seconds to go is what I was saying. And... Now the third and three, we're in the eye. Dana O'Connor flanked to the near side here. Bob Baird, and Baird gets the first down. Sid Boyette again on the tackle. Bob Baird running somewhat tentatively there on that particular play. We'll take a look at the people up front for him on that left side of the line of scrimmage. You can see contact right here, and they're staying with their people. Vickery leading up again on the isolation. And Bob Beard picking up that first down, but that was a nice job by Corey Greshner, the left tackle, and Craig Cruz, the left guard. Cruz, the only junior in that offensive line. Hersher now with 11 first downs to nine for DeCoin. O'Connor looking for Bazzelli, and he's got him. Touchdown! Oh, he made it. Yes, he got in. Chris Bazzelli. Hersher has struck, and Chris Bazzelli takes it across for the Tigers. Nice throw by O'Connor and a nice catch by Bazalian. They ran a bootleg with the guard pulling out in front of O'Connor. They showed action one way and came back. And let's watch the guard pulling here for him right there, number 68. You can see the little fake. He comes out. Bazalian is running for that flag right in the corner of the end zone. Nice catch. The ball right on the money. Watch him squeeze inside that pylon. Great effort right there to pick up the touchdown for Hersher. But you talked about the momentum, and here it is. And Bazalian shows why he's all state on this play. Meanwhile, while we're away, the kick by Jared O'Connor is true. And we've got a close ball game here, 12 to 7. And as we mentioned, how important it would be for Hirsch to come back, and they did it. Taking the opening kickoff and marching all the way for a score. There's the and they did it. Taking the opening kickoff and marching all the way for a score. There's the score, 12 to 7. We'll take a break and come right back. I take care of my body. Play a lot of sports. Play to win. I go to Sport Mart. They got the best at the best prices. For the way you play. The everyday Sport Mart price is guaranteed the lowest in town, or I get the difference in cash. It's the ESP guarantee. For the way you play. Save forty dollars on Porter's fiberglass backboard and goal, only forty nine ninety four. Sport Mart guarantees Porter for less. Sport Mart for the way you play. O'Connor to kick off now. And you're looking at the three deep men. That's 25 Brown in the middle. Green on either side of him, along with Tim Davis, number 10. 
I'm sure El Martin wasn't real happy with Hersher coming out at halftime there and oh, no. driving the ball right down the field and uh, 22 yard touchdown pass finishing it off. And I think we've got ourselves a heck of a ball game right here Mike. Darrell O'Connor really was a different quarterback in that opening series. There's John, at Coach Waking. John Waking. I'm sure that he told Darrell O'Connor just relax keep doing the things that got us here. We're 13 and 0 and you're one of the main reasons why we were able to get to this point of our, our season and uh, just take the time in the second half and uh, that kind of confidence showed in Darrell O'Connor's initial drive down the Kirk field. Kirk Shelton squibs it down and it's taken by one of the up men. Chad to Darrow again. And they try to squib that kick on the AstroTurf, see if they can get lucky on the bounce, but good sure hands there by Tadero. Gets the high five as he comes off. 9-19 to go. DuCoin gets his first shot at things here offensively in the third quarter. Be and interesting to see if there's any adjustments here by Hersher as far as what DuCoin did to them offensively in the first half. Well, they're going to try to shore up that middle. That's one thing for sure. One back. And we get a whistle here before the snap. Everybody was jumping. They strung everybody out in a semicircle, it looked like. And it's an offside or encroachment, actually, against Hersher. So a pickup of a free five for the coin. First down and five, the ball now in Hersher territory on the 47. Only the second penalty against the Tigers. And here is the give and a swarming defense by Hersher meeting Donnie Morgan. If they hadn't introduced themselves to him before, they certainly did on that play. And it seems as if they did make some sort of an adjustment there because they really stuffed this. They bring that linebacker down pretty flat as soon as they start blocking, blocking down. And he's right in there to make the play. And I and I kind of think that they really thought that Baxter was going to be carrying the ball in that particular play. Well, Morgan got it, but went nowhere with it. So a loss of a yard, second down at six. They go back to the regular wishbone. Reverse. And this is Brown. Maurice Brown. Maurice Brown nearly broke it. Knocked out of bounds by Morico, and Maurice Brown showed why he's got a 25-yard average on his end arounds because he almost did it there again. I think. See the counteraction here, and this is Brown coming around the outside. Maurice Brown, 5'10", 140 pounds, but he's got excellent speed. And we do have a flag on the play, and the officials are conversing. Where his foot went out, or we had a Late blocking hit, below maybe. the waist. Yeah, could be a lot of things. Here's the call. Clipping. We get a clip against the offense. And that nullifies that 15-yard gain. Well, let's hear it from Robert Hearns. Very soft-spoken official. Right here is the clip, I think, in number 78. That's it right there. Uh, a very delicate call on that particular play. Well, they pushed Troy Morocco. There's the flag. Morocco, meanwhile, is down over on the Hersher sidelines, and he is uh, flat on his back being attended to while the game goes on. We'll try to update you on that. Corey Jordan, number seven, in to replace him. Second and six. Back to the throw. Being chased and completes it. Away from the first down yardage. More than enough for the first down. This is an interesting story here. He, he gets the ball over the top. This is an interesting story here. He, he gets the ball over the top of the linebacker right there and gets it to Boyette, and his brother is right behind him. And it's a big first down for DuCoin. 8.06 to go. The first completion of the night for DuCoin. Looking at the penalties there, DuCoin penalized five times. Hersher only two. On first down, Baxter again. Baxter running that belly play that he ran so well for a touchdown or for a big gainer in the first half. This time, Brian Lockwood there to say, uh-uh, Scott, not this time. They're tackling everybody that comes in that area, the first man and the second man, and that was the same play that Baxter ran so successfully in the first half and for that big 53-yard touchdown, but Hersher 
Hersher goes to the blackboard at halftime and stops it. You can see he's trying to pop outside, but the outside linebacker is there, and they do a nice job of stuffing that play. On second down, this is Baxter. Close the screen, broken up by Vickery. Vickery, Vickery, Vickery. He almost picked that off and would have had clear sailing. It's a middle screen right here. Baxter dropping back. You can see the linemen don't move at all, but Vickery doing a great job from his linebacker spot. He's key in that fullback, and he comes up and makes the big play for Hersher. Another angle there, and you can see Vickery. Had he picked that off, all he had to do was beat Scott Baxter, and he would have had six more points for Hersher. Third down play, 10 to go. Baxter again. Baxter lets it go, and it's complete to Gotti. Corey Jordan in there to make the play, but a beautiful play by Baxter and Gonny Morgan. Notice the little bootleg fake, and that allows Gonny Morgan to go back against the green, and he just goes down the sideline all by himself, and that safety didn't get over in time to make the play, and that's a big first down for DeCoin. Nice play action fake, a nice football play by the DeCoin Indian. 20-yard game, first and 10. The ball's on the 17 now. DuCoin threatening after the Hersher touchdown. And they give us to Morgan. Morgan straight football like a man possessed he's taken over for DeCoin and showing the leadership just a fine effort here on a little counter dive and he lowers the shoulder and he's bouncing off people and he is not to be denied here doing an excellent job here to pick up that first down Dana O'Connor Benny Lizer combining on the touchdown saving tackle at the four first and goal now Boyette, Morgan, and Green are the backs. And this is Johnny Morgan. He's in. Touchdown. Nothing fancy there. Just a power play off tackle with the bread and butter man, Mr. Johnny Morgan. Well, this is a heavyweight bout. Bang, you take this. Bang, you take that. You know, we talked about that before the game. Uh, both of these football teams undefeated. And... Uh, They've really done a great job. Let's take a look at this. It's nothing more than a power football play. They're kicking out on the outside linebacker there, and Gani Morgan just lowering his shoulder and making a, a good drive into the end zone. Shane Boyette to attempt the point after. With the score 18 to 7. Two previous touchdowns have resulted in failed conversions for DeCoin. This one right up and through. Well, 6.49 to go. There's timeout on the field with the score. DuPoint 19, Hersher 7. King Nissan final 88 closeout sale. Every new 88 Nissan will be sold at cost or below. It sounds unbelievable, but it's true. Ray Herod, the king of Nissans, believes nobody sells Nissans for less. You want rebates? King Nissan has them. Single, double, and triple. And rebates can be used for down payment. You want selection? The king has them. Centra's, Tanzas, Maximos, Pulsars, 200 SXs, ZXs, Pathfinders, Vans, and Trucks. The king has them all that his cost are below. Select yours today. Drive it home tonight. Nobody sells Nissans for less than Ray Harris King Nissan. 5757 West Tui and Niles. Once again, we'll have Eric Green, number 30, kicking off. We'll take another look at that 20 at the end of that drive. Seven plays, 51 yards. This power football here going right off the side, off tackle. Johnny Morgan with a nice lead block up front there by number 43, Sid Boyette. There's Brazilian deep. And there is Eric Green, 6.49 to go, third quarter, 19 to 7, DuPoint. And this, and this one will go to Brazilian at the 8. Brazilian to the 47, good run back by Hersher. Kale Lively knocking him out of bounds. A good field position for the Tigers here. Bazalian taking the ball up to the inside to draw the defenders in, and then he breaks outside down the sideline and showing that excellent speed. A good block right there, driven, driving at the coin Indian right out of bounds. And Bazalian gives Hersher good field position. 
Well, a reminder, college basketball back on Sports Vision. The Fighting Irish go up against St. Bonaventure live from South Bend. Tip-off Monday, 7 o'clock. All college basketball action. Tune in to Sports Vision. First and 10 from the 43-yard line of Hersher. Tigers with the ball. Looking for Bazalian, but too much of a lead from O'Connor. Eric Green on the coverage. What he's trying to do there is get in that seam behind that too deep coverage, and he's drilling the ball a little too much. He's got to lay it up a little flatter on the sideline and let Bazalian to run underneath it. He just throws it a little too hard here, and uh, in this kind of a route, you have to lay it up and let him run under it. 6.36 to go, third quarter, second down. In the eye with wide receivers left and right. Green, the line pass to Baird, and Baird gets very little because Sid Boyette is there. Ghani Morgan checking number 41 in there to put the brakes on him as he gains two. Very similar to the play we talked about before where they clear out with Bazalion, and then they run the screen in behind him, but uh, the tackle missed the block, and a nice open field tackle right there by number 41, Ghani Morgan, who seems to be all over the field for DeCoin. A lot of Indians are all over the field tonight. Third and nine, receiver to the right in the slot. O'Connor with time. This is complete to Vickery, and Vickery looks to be, depending on the spot, about a yard short. Bryce Elledge on the coverage. I would say they're about a yard shy. Again, O'Connor going to the short man in the flood route. Picks the back in the flat. Nice move there. If he could have kept his feet, he had a few more yards ahead of him. And now they're a yard short of the first down. Now fourth and one, Dana O'Connor comes in, number 11, a sophomore, another wide receiver. And he will split out to the left. Brazilian coming in as a tight end here. Now the bottom of your picture on the right. Vickery and Baird in the eye. Vickery, quick hitter, and Vickery gets the first. And lots more. George Dunmire coming in to stop him, but he's across the 45-yard line to the 43. First and 10, once again for Hersher. Vickery coming up a little gimpy here. Just a real quick pivot by the... You can see the center doing a great job right there. Kelly Show, 5'11", 185 pounds. And, of course, they're trying to strip the ball there from uh, Vickery, but he picks up that big first down. Ball's on the 43-yard line, 455 and counting here in the third quarter. 19 to 7, Hersher trails with the ball. Vickery again. And Vickery taking a lot of people with him before Dunmire and Baxter combine to stop him at the 38. Gain of five. Here's Vickery right here. And again, an unheralded part of the offensive firepower of Hershey at 642 yards in the regular season, but he's a good size back at 6'1", 190 pounds. And there's Eric Vickery. 25 yards total. Slot left now. And O'Connor had Joe Poliski in his face and may have tipped that one. Either way, it landed far from anyone in a white shirt. Let's take a look at, again, a little rollout action by, by O'Connor. But again, he has number 34 right in his face. And very difficult for him to get the ball off. O'Connor now 11 for 22, 140 yards on the touchdown to Bazalia. Wide slot formation for Hersher. Third and five. And the slot left. And this is Baird. Baird will be short of the first down. Stopped by Elledge at the 35. It'll bring up fourth and two. And again, if history is any uh, teacher, it's four down territory here for Hersher. John Wakey has really been earning his pay here. He's come up, uh, had to come up with some fourth down decisions on several occasions in this drive. And this one again being another big one. And again, he's scratching his head saying, did I call the right play with fourth and two? He's done a great job at Hershey in the last five years. Vickery and Baird come in. They are the two backs in the eye. Vickery the up back. Baird the tailback. Receiver split left. And again, they go to Baird. 
Donnie Morgan almost gets him behind the line, but Baird, with great second effort, gets to the 31st down. Stop in there by Mike Patterson, number 80, for the Indians. Just a real tough job of running here by Baird coming up, and he knows what he needs, and he gets smacked right there by number 41, but he keeps on driving and picks up that first down. That's a big play for Hersher in this particular drive. Ball's off of 30 now with the first down. And they have the three wide receivers left. Oracle here split down the right. A time play looking for Vizalian, but overthrown. Eric Green on the coverage. Just a count play right there. They sent it out there, but too far for Chris Vizalian. Interesting formation. We had a trip set to the top of the screen. And they're trying to get him one-on-one. -on -one. What they're forcing the defense to do by going on that trip and then a split to the other side is to take away the dub double coverage on Bazalian and make him go one-on-one. -on -one. Second down play, Darrell O'Connor. Morgan on the blitz, but oh. the bed. he's got great protection in front of him. Eric Green makes the saving tackle, but a beautifully set up play by Hersher. He had a wall in front of him. I really thought there was nobody there, and I really thought that he was going to take that all the way in. And, and a smart football play by Chris Bazalian downfield because he doesn't clip. Great pressure right here. You can see why I got a little excited. He had nobody in front of him. And smart play right there by Bazalian not to clip and to bring that play back. So his foot goes out of bounds right there. Great camera work. 15-yard gain down to the 15-yard line. First and 10 to go, 249 left in the third quarter. Hersher again on the march, 19 to 7. Vickery and Vickery is met by the left side of the line. Shane Boyette, Sid Boyette combining together. Together with Martin McGuire. The coin really jams up the middle here. They're not falling for the formations that Hersher's throwing at them. Knowing that Vickery is going to come up, they did a nice job inside containing that. Because number 43, Sid Boyette, has done a fine job the entire ball game here. So Hersher's knocking on the door with 2.15 left in the third quarter. Second down, still 10 yards to go. From the eye. O'Connor's got some running room, but look at Sid Boyette on the pursuit. O'Connor, when he started that play, looked like he had, well, first down, maybe touchdown, but Sid Boyette came up very quickly. Let's watch Boyette, Boyette here. He's got the fullback coming out of the backfield, and he's staying with him, and O'Connor turns to go upfield, and he releases on the fullback and just runs down O'Connor. Just a great effort by Sid Boyette. These kids are something, aren't they? Third down and six from the 11. O'Connor and again behind Vickery. Boyette and Green on the coverage. Again, Daryl O'Connor not seeming to be very effective going to his right because he's got to switch over, turn his shoulder, plant his feet, and he's throwing behind the receivers. He's much more effective going to his left. Oracle comes out, Dana O'Connor comes in. All the O'Connors, by the way, we must tell you, are cousins. They are not brothers. The Boyettes, however, are twin brothers. There are a lot of family around the Hershey team. Passing formation well. here, Mike. Well, fourth and six. They're all strung out. O'Connor has the ball tipped, intended for Baird. Well short. Good play again by Ghani Morgan. And the ball will go over to Decoy. 1.14 to go. The Indians hold, and they will take over on their own 11-yard line. Decoy is play. putting a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure here on, on O'Connor. You can see they're driving the fullback right back into his face. And Martin. right there again, Martin McGuire, number 79, making a big play for Decoy. McGuire, Dunmire, Boyette, all in there. That pass didn't have a chance. So first and ten now with a minute 14 to go in the third quarter. Decoin goes to the offense again. They lead it 19 to 7. 
And they give us to the up back. And Sid Boyette has got some room. And Boyette gets out to the 28-yard line. Benny Leiser on the stop. First down yardage and then some. This game has not lacked for excitement at any one particular series at all. They're always seem to be popping a big play. Something's happening. It's been a very exciting football game. 17-yard gain as we are at a minute six to go. They'll start the clock. Tight and the wishbone. Here is Gotti Morgan to the outside, and Morgan gets 12 yards. Again, first down at the 42. Jay Schnell on the stop. Yeah, there are a lot of two-way players for DeCoin, more so than for Hersher, especially in the line. See number 53, a cheerleader here with helmet and shoulder pads. And we've got a Hersher player down on the field after that big run by Ghani Morgan. Uh, Rich Vansell, a junior center, has to fulfill that other very important function. Got to be a cheerleader. Let's see if we can tell who's down. That's Coach John Wakey there, attending to his player along with the team doctor. And again, the uh, facilities for the care of these players has been upgraded so much over the last few years in high school football with the advent of the trainers going into the high schools and doctors that have donated their time to the various schools. It's really been a, a boon to high school football and can lay to rest the fears by parents of their sons being injured on the field. The, uh, Eric the care they've received is tremendous. I'm sorry, Jack. Eric Schmidt, the down lineman, is the player down. Well, 43 seconds to go here. Schmidt number 75. While we wait here, I got a question for you, Mike. We had talked about trivia earlier. Uh -oh. What are the two high schools in the state of Illinois that presently have two of their former graduates playing professional football? Professional football. As I'll repeat that, professional football. <laughs> <laughs> two Chicago. I, mean, I know, I know this. I know you do. I, and as I take a look, Eric Schmidt is in good shape, though. He's coming off with a little bit of help. We'll take a look at the injury. He's double teamed at the top of the screen, and that's how he went down. He got the second block coming over the top, and he's just rolling over backwards there, but he's off the field with his own under his own power, so that's a good sign. I'm not going to prolong the agony. Who are they? Okay, Wheaton North, Jim Jerica. Hello. And long for the Detroit Lions. We'll come oh, back later, and I'll show you who the other ones are. All right. Meanwhile, we're first and ten. From the points 41 yard line. The Indians, Baxter, flags flying. And barely back to the line of scrimmage is Connie Morgan. And the walk-off will be from the looks of things. Yeah. Illegal procedure. Procedure call against the coin. That'll be a five-yard walk-off back to the 36 with the final 25 seconds left here in the third quarter. 19 to 7. We have a back in motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still put. The call there from the official, Robert Hearns. Start up the clock, he says. And the point is... Not have to run a play here if it doesn't want to. There are only 23 seconds to go. But they'll get one off here. First and 15 now. Brown split to the left, and this is Baxter. Baxter laterals as he's being dragged down to Gotti Morgan. And I think we're going to get a forward lateral here by the, the sure official looked like it. field. It was a variation on the old hook and ladder play, but... Uh, Here's Baxter hanging out of the football, and right here when the corner converges on him, he pitches the ball, but the uh, Can't tell back, that, it's hard to tell from there, but Gotti Morgan, I think, was in front of him on that particular play. Well, with five officials, I'm sure one of them had the angle. That's what the call is. That's what the call is. <laughs> Shelton coming up in there. Kirk Shelton for Hersher. Replacing uh, Eric Schmidt, who gets a breather after being shaken up there. 
official coming down to the bottom of the screen to explain the penalty to uh, Al Martin of Ducoin. And again, another great job of officiating by these officials for the high school championship game. We have an illegal forward pass on the offense from the spot five yards and lots of down. Second down. So it will be a second down play. You heard the loss of a down as part of the package. And it will be second and 11. Alan Martin, his first year as the coach. He went here to high school, played football here, then went on scholarship to Murray State. This is a way to break in. Two seconds to go in the final play of the third quarter and the handoff to Green, Eric Green to the 47-yard line as the gun sounds. Craig Cruz, number 68 on the stop, along with Rob Schultz. So we've come through three quarters now. Ducoin gets up and cheers because the Indians have a lead. How commanding? Well, we'll find out when we come back for the final 12 minutes. <laughs> Get your sports news early Sunday night. Watch the Chicago Sun-Times Sports Week, the only live primetime sports show in Chicago. Every Sunday, it's one hour of complete coverage of your favorite Chicago teams. But you get more than just the highlights. You'll meet Chicago's best athletes and key sports figures. Plus, receive expert analysis from Sun-Times writers and Sports Week correspondents. You don't have to stay up late anymore for the sports news. Watch the Chicago Sun-Times Sports Week, right here Sunday nights on Sports Vision. Well, what would you do if you couldn't read easily? Probably have your eyes checked, huh? Get a pair of glasses, right? But if you couldn't understand an ordinary conversation, what would you do? The smart thing would be to get a hearing checkup, like I did. Almost 20 million Americans have a hearing loss, most of them needlessly, because they could be helped medically, surgically, or like me, with hearing aids. Why do so many still suffer? False pride, lack of information, stigma? If you or someone you love doesn't hear well, arrange for a hearing checkup now. For hearing health information, call toll-free Hearing Helpline 800 Earwell. 800 Earwell. Okay, you did good. All right. Hearing, Box 1840, Washington, D.C., 20013. You should hear what you're missing. The story with 12 minutes left to go. DuCoin has gone out ahead and they've stayed out ahead 19 to 7. And we'll tell you now the written word comes to life when four sports writers defend their columns and opinions on the sports writers on TV. Debating begins Monday at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. So stay tuned right here on Sports Vision. Good to have you with us. Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney, Bill Hazen and Bill Gorley bringing you the other games, all six IHSA championships. This is DuCoin. Scott Baxter on the move looking for Sid Boyette. But behind him, and off his shoot tops, incomplete. And it will set up something we haven't seen in quite a while, and that is a punt. Presuming they're going to punt with fourth and five from their own 46. And I would say with that kind of a lead, it's a safe assumption. Eric Green will go back there. And Chris Bazalian will head back in single safety. Dana O'Connor, number 11, will be the up man. And Bazalian, who almost broke one before, is going to get another shot at it right now. Chris has three touchdowns on returns this year. One on a kickoff return, two on punt returns. And this one off the side of his foot will go out of bounds at the 41 of Hersher. Eric Green, who had a better than 30-yard average, gets his first problem punt of the day, only 15 yards. Well, he was trying to keep that ball away from Bisley on going deep with that. And uh, he tried to put it over in the corner and kind of shank it off the side of his foot. Well, while we have the time, really want to thank our spotters. Roger Kraft with the coin, Glenn O'Connor for Hersher. Thanks very much, guys. You've done a terrific job for us. 11.49 to go, 19 to 7. Hersher trails. 11.49 to go, 19 to 7. Hersher trailing. They've got the ball. O'Connor to Bazalian on the reverse. Good pursuit by DeCoin and all the shiftiness of Bazalian still results in the loss of one yard. Eric Green made the 
eventual stop, but there are about four players for DeCoin who came in and kept Bazalian from turning it upfield. Just see the, the action of the backs there, and here comes Bazalian coming around the end, and he's just got a tough time. DeCoin is not a bit fooled by that play action fake there with the reverse, and he's making a great effort, but he still ends up losing a yard. He's an outstanding athlete. Second down at 11, balls back on the 40. Just over the 40-yard line. Gazalian here in the slot left. And O'Connor is knocked down by McGuire. McGuire on the sack. Well, they won't call it a sack because he got back to the original line of scrimmage looking for Bazalian downfield, and Bazalian was covered. He certainly was, and again, they're changing up the coverage, but they had doubled him with a man under and a zone over the top, and the combination of that and the rush by the front four of uh, DuCoin has really put the, the pressure on Daryl O'Connor. Well, O'Connor now with 10, 10, 30 and counting knows he's got to put some points on the board. 19 to 7, we're at third and 10. Wide receivers split left and right. Two backs in the eye. Straight drop. Oh, there's he Chris Elliott. He's got it. He's gone. Chris Bazalian, what a play, what a touchdown. His 16th touchdown of the year, and O'Connor just laid that ball up beautifully. 59 yards between the two defenders. And that's what they've been doing all year, and they finally connected. Great throw by O'Connor, and just a great hands catch by Bazalian. And he finally does get some protection here, which gives him the opportunity to throw the ball down the field. 59-yard TD reception. As we look at it here, a good job by the offensive front, especially the center and the two guards there. Kerry Scholl, the center, and O'Connor has more time than he's had before, and he goes to his favorite receiver. And watch the hands catch here. What a throw. Baxter and Green have done such a good job defending. We're beaten on that one, and the kick is no good. Brazilian now five catches, 131 yards, two touchdowns. And with 10 minutes, seven seconds left to go in the game, it's a six-point lead now, 19 to 13. The king of the car dealers is Bob Roarman. We're having a really big tent sale. The 89s are here, and all remaining 88s must go. Plus more than 100 used cars, imports, and domestics available with 90-day warranties. Under the tent at Arlington Acra in Palatine. The king of the car dealers is Bob Roarman. When we save you money, I'm a happy liar. Circle. Savard now hangs on to five, trying to stop it, and he does! Rick Vive pulled his way to the... The Blackhawks make their way down the East Coast as they take on the Boston Bruins live from the Garden at 6 p.m. Saturday on Sports Vision. The Stanley Cup finalists are a definite power in the Adams division, and with Ray Bork on defense, the Hawks will have their work cut out for them. It's all Saturday night at 6, exclusively on Sports Vision. You're home for the NHL. Well, watch Chris Bazalian here. Watch the poetry in this play. Here's the protection we talked about, and he just lays the ball up and right over the top, and you can see when we talked about that double coverage before, and he beat it on that play and shows you what a great athlete he is, and that's the kind of passes O'Connor has thrown for over 1,500 yards all season. Mike Patterson and Eric Seifert of DeCoin blocked the extra point. Long by Jared O'Connor, so now it's... Uh, Six-point game. Five receptions, 131 yards, two touchdowns, a 59-yard drive, three plays, a minute 42 on the clock. O'Connor now 14 for 27, 214 yards and a touchdown. And there is Shelton, Kirk Shelton, to kick it off. 10:07 to go. Tim Davis, Green, number 30, and Green. Number 30, and Maurice Brown, the deep back. Shelton scripts it, looking for the onsides. Ball is free. Hershey's jumping up as though they have it. 
Now we'll see. No, yes, they, they do. It. They do. Hersher made the recovery. Baxter's got the ball. He says, look, I got it here. But the officials say, oh, yes, you do. Okay. And the cheer goes up from the other side. Oh, and Wakey is now oh, talking to the officials here. Let's see if we can see it on the replay. Well, surprising play here by Hersher with 10 minutes left to go for the onside kick. It's a power onside, which means they've got 10 players from the kicker onto the sideline, and it's bouncing around right here. It's still free. Donnie Morgan missing it first. It's still free right there, and it looked like a Hersher player dived in, but they don't get the ball. Well, DeCoin got the ball now with good field position on the 45-yard line. This is Baxter turning it up on the option. And Baxter, first down yardage into Hersher territory at the 44-yard line. And that's one of the reasons for the onside kick, because they were afraid they might not get that football back. Because Baxter has done such a good job leading the DuCoin Indians offense here with that excellent speed on that option. He gets outside, and uh, John Wakey is, is concerned that Hersher might not get the ball back. Craig Cruz, number 68, on the stop, but it's a first down for DuCoin. Scott Baxter has been a leading ball carrier today. First and... First and 10 from the Hersher 44. And nobody got fooled on that. With Sid Boyette stopped for a loss of two. Eric Schmidt made the play. Eric Schmidt and Rob Schultz, the left side, the right side of that line. Two of the three leading tacklers on the team. You can really hear kind of a buzz in the stadium. I mean, it's really... Oh, everybody's pumped. The excitement, the electricity in the air there with nine, just a little over nine minutes left. And Ducoin with the ball. The score, 19-13, favorite the Indians. Six-point lead. Anybody's game right? Shane Boyette. Shane Boyette, his first catch of the day, and down inside the 30. Shane Boyette makes the play, and what a catch by Shane Boyette. Well, now we can tell the story. You can see Shane Boyette, born with only one hand. It's his right hand, but he makes his catches. He's the leading receiver on this team. Plays defensive end, kicks the extra points. Shane Boyette. That's a great high school story right there. Oh, my. What a story. 16 yards on that one. The completion to Shane Boyette. 8.35 to go. The ball's on the 29. Baxter gives it to Morgan. Morgan down to the 10. Aggressive defense by Hersher basically overran that play. They were in the backfield again, but Gonnie Morgan blew right by. He's really had an excellent day, and DuCoin has really found a soft spot in Hersher's defensive line. And, of course, when you got backs that can run like Gonnie Morgan, 5'11", 190-pound senior, you're cooking. Now they're on the 10-yard line with just a little over eight minutes left in the ballgame. Benny Lizer on the stop. 8.19 to go. Clock is ticking away. Just outside the 10, first down and up the gut goes Baxter and almost loses the ball, but gains six yards. Little quarterback draw Whoa. there. That ball came dangerously close to popping loose for DuCoin. Baxter just took one step back and then jammed it back up into the line of scrimmage and picked up big yardage. Now they're down on the four yard line of Hersher and they're threatening. Second down. And four for a first down, four and a half for a touchdown. And Morgan this time is caught from behind, and he is stopped. Kind of a Ryan broken Lockwood. play. Lockwood and Schmidt. Didn't look like they really had good sync on this play right here. He kind of Baxter overstepped the lane there and forced Johnny Morgan to bounce it outside. And some of the DuCoin fans are a little upset that it was kind of a quick whistle, but uh, he was certainly well within the grasp of all the Hersher defenders. And those are 60 very tough yards. Well, between Baxter, Morgan, and Boyette, they've got three kind of runners here. Third and five. Morgan again. Touchdown, DuCoin. That might well do it. 6.54 to go. And 
Johnny Morgan has had the tough yardage, gets it in. A little counter fake to the fullback, and here comes Johnny Morgan again, the hardest runner that Hersher's faced probably all season long, and he picks up the touchdown. And there he is, getting the call from the official for the touchdown. No question about it. Coin making a decision now whether or not they want to go for two. Calling a timeout here. Well, they've got a 12-point lead. And it'll take two scores to beat him anyway, two touchdowns to beat him anyway, even with the two points. So, and I, I got a feeling they're going to go for two, Mike. Six minutes, 54 seconds. Al Martin with the instructions to his team. They have a 25 to 13 lead over a Hersher High School team that has scored better than three dozen points a game. In a nutshell, there it is. 25, 13, 654. They're on a beautiful night for just about anything. This is November. Wow. Seven plays, 55 yards on the drive, three minutes, 13 seconds. There's a concern. John Wakey, the coach of Hersher, has had a great career in his five years as the head coach at Hersher. And, of course, he was there before as an assistant under Dean Kappel. And Dean is Kappel. And Dean is presently the head coach at Bradley Bourbonis. And now uh, Ducoin's coming up on the football, and they're going for two. Both ends in tight. On the wishbone. Flags fly. Half the distance. Encroachment. We're drawn off. And it's against the defense. The penalty against the defense. Penalty against the ball. Half the distance to the goal line. We have a dead ball foul. Encroachment on the defense. Play it again. I heard Humphrey Bogart say that once. The thing is, he never says that in the movie. He never says play it again, Sam, in the movie. There you go. You still don't be a player who's playing in the pros in Chicago high school. Up short. Good play by the Hersher defense to stop. Did the coin try for point? So, they will come back up the field. Six minutes, 54 seconds to go. The score now. DuCoin 25 and Hersher 13. So we got the two players from Wheaton North. Wheaton North, Jim Jurega with Jurega. Denver Broncos. Okay, and Chuck Long. Chuck Long, Long Detroit. Right. And I'll give you a hint. Uh, One's with the Bears right now. Uh, you're, you're really going to make me seem like a dummy. Okay? Well, you did so well last year. And you made uh, me look Oh, so wait bad. a minute. Piece ah. of cake. Piece of cake. Emery Moore headed Evans. Very good. Now, okay. who's the second one? Who's from the, the same? Oh, I know. From Buffalo, the defensive back. Or from Indianapolis. Uh, Mike Pryor? Wrong. No, it's not Pryor. I know who it is. Don't don't go anywhere. Wait a minute. Hold on. Meanwhile, we got a football game <laughs> here. He, he's, he played at North. All right. I give up. Getting set for the kickoff here. When you dig down into the ground, what do you find? Would you stop it? Play. Yeah. Clay Matthews. Oh, Clay Matthews. How could I forget? That's a pizza you owe me, buddy. Yeah, you better believe it. Meanwhile, Eric Green to kick it off. 6.54 to go. Corey Jordan and Chris Bazalian, the two deep men. Line drive. Goes to Jordan at the 12. Jordan trying to break it. Chad Tadaro on the stop. But Jordan getting across the 30-yard line to the 33. Here's Corey. And now it's time to come out slinging. It's going to be slinging time right now for Daryl O'Connor. And I'm sure that they'll go back to some of those trip sets and spread the field and open it up. And I was wrong again. They're in the eye with receivers split left and right. 275 rushing yards for DeCoin. This is Baird. He's going to throw it off the option. Look for Bazalian. Well covered. They're not going to let him go. 
Uh, they're not going to fall for any tricks really to this point. They just are not going to fall for this. Just a halfback pass, and they're trying. Interesting, though, they're trying to throw it to the backside, hoping that the corner and the safety would have rolled with the flow. But well, Tim Davis and Maurice Brown had Bazalian step for step. They had him sandwiched. That's their responsibility, and they're not going to give him up until the ball is down. Kersher, 214 yards through the air now. It's second down, only 47 for DeCoin. But the ground game has been the thing. Here's O'Connor cranking it to the right side. And overthrows. Dana O'Connor, number 11. Now the next two plays, John will be going for the first down here. And he might not go so, many, so much for six as he's going for the first down to keep the drive going here and keep possession. I don't see him punting here, so we're looking at, I believe, two downs. Right. 6.20 to go. Bryce Elledge on the cover, but the ball was overthrown. Extra defensive backs in here on third down. Clock shows 6.20. Of course, it is stopped after the incompletion. Three-step throw. Oh, get a play. And down goes both the quarterback and Morical number one, and we're going to get a call on... Bryce Elledge for pass interference. It was a trip. It was unintentional, but still interference, and uh, that'll keep the first down and the drive going for Hersher. Down and the drive going for Hersher. Only four seconds on the clock. See the reaction by the DuPont Indian fans. Official talking to O'Connor. Don't forget tomorrow we'll have three more championship football games for you. We have pass interference on the defense. 15 yards up, first down. In high school, it's a 15-yard penalty. Not a first down at the spot of the foul. In this case, it's a better play, though, for Bursher because it gains him a couple of more yards. And now the ball's on the 48. First down, 6-16 to go. Gets some yardage and keeps his clock stopped. Six penalties against the coin, only three for Hersher. O'Connor split to the right. Short man is broken up by Shane Boyette. Shane Boyette reaching across with that good right hand and knocking the ball away. We have seen Jack, Shane Boyette, make that play and make an interception going across his body one-handed. And that is incredible. It really is. This is really a, just a, an outstanding story for about a high school athlete and really what high school sports are all about. Don't tell me I can't. Because there's a young man that doesn't feel sorry for himself. He's one of the best athletes on the, in the school and has done a great job playing both ways in this game as a tight end also and caught a pass earlier. After the incompletion, second down and 10. Clock at 6-11. Looking for the tight end. Now it's looking for Bazalia and overthrows him. Defended in there by Maurice Brown. Bring up third down. A lot of substituting in the DeCoin line. Trying to keep a lot of pressure on O'Connor here, and they and they certainly have done that. That was good pressure there by Kim Morgan, number 44, and Martin McGuire, number 79. Putting a lot of pressure on O'Connor. And, of course, a lot of credit should go to the secondary of DuPoint. They've really bottled up the receivers of Hersher. Brazilian's got two touchdowns, but they really clamped down on him when they had to. Third and ten. 48-yard line. Brazilian to the near side. Over the middle intended for the tight end, Schnell. And it's fourth down. And O'Connor really has a tough time going to his offhand side when he has to turn the shoulders. You can see right here, kind of lets it sail. He gets pretty good protection, but uh, the ball's just overthrown. And this has been the story for O'Connor every time he has to go away from his off from his strong side. Well, no question here with six minutes left on the clock. It's fourth down and they're going. There's the season right here. Brazilian 93 to the near side. Split to the right side. 
screen is the screen to Baird. Baird needs 10, and he does not get it. Ghani Morgan stopping him short at the 45. DeCoin once again will hold and take over on downs. You know, when you see young football players like this, Mike, it really puts to rest the theory about the two-way football player. Here's the screen, an excellent call, but just outstanding pursuit by Ghani Morgan coming down. He gives him eight, but doesn't give him 10, and that's what he needed. And Ghani Morgan has been outstanding both defensively and offensively for DeCoin tonight. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, the kids can't stay fresh if they're going both ways. And people like Ghani Morgan put that to rest. He's done a great job. Under six minutes to go. The 12-point lead for DuCoin. More importantly, they have the football. And looking for the Class 3A championship. We're going to be milking the clock in this set of downs. And the give to Gotti Morgan, and Gotti goes the other way. Working the other side of the ball, gets first down yardage plus a 15-yard pickup to the 40. Stopped by Brian Lockwood and Benny Lizer. Clock now running. They'll move the chains and wind up the clock again. 5.43 and counting. Morgan now has 80 yards rushing, and they've all really been very tough, tough yards. Just so impressed with these backs from DuPoint, the way they play both sides of the ball. Just so impressed with these backs from DuPoint, the way they play both sides of the ball so effectively. And that includes the quarterback. This is Green. Green breaks two tackles, gets first down yardage inside the 30. 5.24 to go. Dana O'Connor, Brian Jacobson making the stop. 13-yard gain. Now we just come to the other side, just a power play, the lead back kicking out the end and the fullback leading up, and there's Green making a nice run right up the, right off off tackle there, and they're running with an awful lot of confidence. Well, Alan Martin looking at championship straight in the face right now. Little game here. Lockwood making the stop on Ghani Morgan. 300 yards on the ground here for DuPoint. Baxter with 98 yards on 12 carries. Morgan 82 on 12 carries. Boyette 77 yards. Green 47 yards on only three carries. That's how he gets that 25 plus yard average. Or close to it anyway. Clock now continues to run. Of course, DuCoin was back here in 1986 when they played for the state championship game. And we're blown away by McNamara. 30 to 12. And this is Green. Green getting six yards. Hersher, having lost to the eventual state champion the last four years, thought this was its year. Does not look that way. Let's take a look at Barry Warhorse, the middle linebacker for Hersher. You can see him fighting off the tackle coming down, but he never takes his eyes off the ball carrier. And, of course, it's about a five-yard gain, and John Wakey would hope that he'd be up a little more. But uh, you can see the big cast on his left hand there. He's got a sprained wrist. Clock is running with 350. Not much happening on that play for DeCoin. The Hersher defense rising up. Bring up a fourth down. Rob Schultz, Craig Cruz. Stopping Morgan. Well, from the 22-yard line, on a fourth down and four, nothing fancy here. They're just going to try for the first, but not risk any kind of interception or severe turnover. That may take it back the other way. Six. John Wakey looking on. Watching his season tick away. Fourth down play. Baxter. Ball is loose. And it really doesn't matter who comes up with it at this point because it's well short of the first down. And Hersher will get a shot here with 3.01. Well, Hersher can score and score quickly. We saw it against Bishop McNamara in one of the previous playoff games. They blocked a punt. 
Went in and scored a touchdown with Schultz blocking the punt. Schmidt running it in. This team can score, and of course with Bazillion, they've always got a threat. But if they're going to do it, they got to do it now, and DuCoin has held them. Another screen. Connor, this is Baird. Baird's got some blocking. Out of bounds. Baird's got a first down, but he stays in bounds, which means the clock will keep running. Scott Baxter coming in to stop him. 2.38 to go. The clock will stop when they move the chains. Hersher should be getting the play here again. Good call by John Wakey with the defense dropping off. He throws a screen to Bob Baird and uh, does a nice job of running, picking up the first down. He should be trying to get out of bounds here. You can see he's trying to cut back in. Well, the clock starts again, and Hersher is up to the line. 2.29 to go. Hersher with all three of his timeouts. O'Connor. Misfiring on that and takes a shove at Shane Boyette, who came in. Bob Baird gave Boyette a shove after the block. The official let it go. O'Connor 16 for 34, 233 yards. O'Connor, I think, is a little frustrated at this stage of the game, having had far superior games throughout the previous 13 football games, and big credit to DeCoin's defense, and uh, O'Connor showing some frustration here at the last phase of the ball game with 2.23 on the clock. Bring up the second down, 25 to 13. DeCoin leads, Hersher with the ball. On its own, 33. O'Connor with time, this time it is picked off by Baxter. Scott Baxter is picked off by Baxter. Scott Baxter has done it for DuCoin. Down to the 25-yard line with 2.14 to go. You can see the outstanding crowd that we have here. Again, O'Connor going over the middle, and those safeties are sitting right there, and Baxter comes up with the ball, being the excellent athlete that he is. And uh, he's done it on both sides of the football, offensively and defensively. Well, he had a receiver, but underthrew him, and Baxter, ever alert, now turns around and goes under center. Clock is ticking now with two minutes left. Ducoy, ready to go. And look at this run by Ghani Morgan. Again, ripping holes through the Hersher line. Inside the 20. There's a frustrated, I'm sure, very disappointed John Wakey, but it's easy for us to say that they've had a fantastic year, and it's too bad two great teams like this that somebody has to lose. But Hersher's had an outstanding season. And on the other side, the celebration has started. The cheering in the stands from DuCoin. Baxter again, right up the middle. The clock continues to run. What a day he's had. Passing for 47 yards, but rushing for over 100. 14 carries, 108 yards for Scotty Baxter. And oh yes, he's picked off a pass. You can see Baxter is one tired young man right there. I guess he's earned a rest, huh? He's earned his keep. A minute four. He's been the chief of the Indians tonight. Oh, Jack. A little Irish humor inserted there. Absolutely. They never had to keep his wigwam. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's late. 48 seconds. Two more snaps, and that'll do it. Cheers from DeCoin. The official word on Baxter, 14 carries, 104 yards. And we'll give him, I think it's safe to say, although it's a tough choice between Sid Boyette, Morgan, and what a job the defensive secondary did basically on her shirt. This has been a real team of valuable player situation. So we'll give it to Baxter, but he can cut it up into lots of pieces. They don't have to get a playoff. That'll do it. DuCoin, the new Illinois State 3A champions. Five seconds and counting. The final gun, the final score, 
Ducoin 25, Hersher 13, Ducoin the champions here in Class 3A. We'll be back. Factory incentive programs on new cars and trucks offer you big savings, but how can you be sure you're getting the best price? At Solozzi Edelson Chevrolet, we eliminate the confusion. We promise car for car, with or without factory rebates, you'll save more money or we'll give you back the difference in cash. And we have Chicagoland's largest selection of Chevrolet cars and trucks. So visit Solozzi Edelson Chevrolet in Elmhurst at York and Roosevelt Roads, where well, you, you always, always save more money. money. Here's the pitch to Bain. Swing and a fly ball. This will be it. Center fielder's got it. Cruz is tagged. Here's the throw. Not in time. Stop play. Relive the excitement of the 83 Division Championship with your own copy of Winning Ugly, the story of the 1983 White Sox. It's just one in an ongoing series of Sox highlight tapes you can order for the very first time from Sports Vision. Relive the drama of the longest game ever played the 1984 White Sox Brewers Contest, which lasted two days. Follow Tom Seaver's historic path to win number 300 and the amazing 1985 Rookie of the Year season of Ozzie Guillen in the Emmy Award-winning special Youth and Experience, the story of the 1985 White Sox. And follow the rebuilding course of Sox baseball under the helm of manager Jim Fragosi in a year in transition, the story of the 1986 White Sox. If you're a Sox fan, you'll want to add these tapes to your personal baseball collection. To order, send $19.95 per highlight show, plus $2.50 ship. To order, send $19.95 per highlight show, plus $2.50 shipping and handling to Sports Vision, White Sox Highlights, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Check or money order, no CODs, please. That's $19.95 per tape, plus $2.50 shipping and handling to Sports Vision. White Sox Highlights, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Please include your address and list either VHS or Beta. Be one of the first to start a White Sox video cassette collection. Order today. And now be the first to have the Great Awakening, the story of the 1987 White Sox, a team that registered the best post-All-Star record in the American League West, a division that included the world champion Minnesota Twins. By sending check or money order to Sports Vision, White Sox Highlights, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Well, you're looking at the victorious Indians of DeCoin High School. They came here back in 1986, came home second. Tonight, it's a different story. They are winners by a score of 25 to 13 over a very, very good Hersher High School group. Now, we've got Coach Al Martin with us. So, Al, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, Al, I had a question for you. What did you find in Hersher's defense that enabled you to run so well against that tough defense? Well, I, I tell you, it was that outside beer. Uh, Early, or, or, uh, early in the second quarter that got us going. That's something that uh, we've been working on all year long, and uh, we really haven't used that uh, that much this year. And, uh, you know, we was having trouble moving the ball, and they were shooting uh, shooting linebackers so hard, and uh, we was just kind of uh, guessing around what could go, and then we went to the outside veer, and uh, I think we ran it about eight times in a row, and it, it hurt them there in the first half. Well, I'll tell you something. This is not bad for your first season, Al. What are you going to do for an encore? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to relax a while and uh, spend some time with my kids. And, and, Real quick, uh, though, I know you got to get up for the awards. Talk to me about your quarterback, Scott Baxter. He did it both offensively and defensively. Oh, he's a heck of an athlete. You know, he doesn't have that blazing speed, but I'd take him any day. He can uh, run the football on offense. He can go get the football on defense. He can do it all, and he's a very good leader. So I think a lot of him. Alan Martin, congratulations. We know it's time for you to take the awards along with your team. So congratulations, champ. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll come back to wrap things up. We're looking at Scott Baxter, Shane Boyette, and the rest of the winning Decoin Indians. We'll be back in just a minute.
just a family people going through some temporary trouble. They've lost a job, a farm, or a husband. Food stamps can help. You don't have to be in public assistance. You can have a job and still qualify. Now one phone call can get you information to tell you if you qualify for food stamps. And how to get them. America has made a place at our table of plenty for you. for a free brochure, 1-800-453-4000, food stamps, mealtimes don't have to be tough times. Welcome to the Great American Outdoors with Ron Shear. The award-winning hunting and fishing television series from all across America. We bring the outdoors in. The Great American Outdoors with Ron Shear. Chrysler Plymouth dealers, and they're pricing their stock so everything goes. Yep, 88 Chrysler New Yorker Landau, now with $1,000 factory cash back, goes. 88 Chrysler New Yorker, with $1,000 factory cash back, goes. Both with fabulous clearance prices. Yep, everything goes, now at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Get there. On the North Shore, visit Point One Motors. The electricity. The sound. The fun. The game. The bowl. Tickets for all tickets for all home games are on sale now. Pick the teams you want to see, the dates you want to make. Call 853-3636. The game is home to the beginning. Well, Gotti Morgan and the first place trophy for Class 3A. His DuCoin Indians certainly earned it. They deserve it, and they're going to take it back to DuCoin. Well, for many years, DuCoin was the home of the Hamiltonian, but to mix some metaphors, the football team were thoroughbreds tonight. Really excellently played game and a well-coached game by Al Martin. It really was, and it's really too bad that one of these football teams had to lose. We had a tremendous crowd. The atmosphere was fantastic. The weather was great. You were great. It was a great football team. <laughs> I told you a million times, never exaggerate. Meanwhile, with a 12-0 lead in the first half, the coin seemed to be on its way. But a couple of touchdowns early in the uh, second half by uh, by Hersher brought the score to 19 to 13. And here's where DeCoin put the nail in the ball. Well, here's that tough running back, Gani Morgan, on a five-yard run. And this was with 6.54 left in the fourth quarter. And this really iced it for DuCoin. And he was really a two-way football player along with the uh, quarterback, Baxter. They just did a great job. And DuCoin had such fine athletes in the entire football game. And they really deserved to win their 14th football game of the year in the state championship. Now, we certainly saw a very good receiver, an all-stater, and well-deserved Chris Bazalian caught a couple of touchdown passes, but again, to the credit of the defense for DuPoint, they bottled them up uh, with the exception of those two catches when they had to. Well, we really didn't think coming into the ball game that DuPoint's defense was that outstanding. We really thought Hersher would put a lot of points on the board, and could it be DuCoin would be able to score against Hersher's tough defense and can right. completely reverse the role. Well, let's not forget that Hersher's a team that not only beat, but shut out Kankakee McNamara, a team that had won this title the last three years. That's right. They beat him 28 to nothing, and all year long, as we mentioned in the broadcast earlier, they had 36-point average per game, but DuCoin did a great job. You can see the happiness, the jubilation, the excitement. Call it what you will. This has been a long road for these kids. Some of them remember back to 1986. And this was a much more exciting finish for the Indians of DuCoin. Well, our next IHSA football game on Sports Vision will come your way tomorrow morning. At 9.30, we'll have the Class 4A state championship. We'll be here with 5A and 6A as well. The 4A featuring Oak Lawn, Richards against the Lions of Peoria. The executive producer for IHSA football, Danny DiCarlo. Tonight's game has been produced and directed by Bob Albrecht. Remote facilities provided by Trio Video of Chicago.
Now stay tuned for Chicago Racing Wrap-Up coming up next on Sports Vision. For Jack McInerney, I'm Mike Lederman saying good night from Norma, Illinois. Once again, the Class 3A Final Football Championship score, DuCoin 25, Hersher 13. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Vision. Good night, everybody. Gretzky.